<laughs> hi. Hello, Richard. How are you? Uh, hi, Jamie. How are you? How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, very well, thanks. Good. Um, I'm a little bit worried, actually. Why is that? Well, I'm sitting in the spare room like I normally do when we do these podcasts every week. With an inflatable uh, Thunderbird 1 over your shoulder, I should point out. Yeah, carry on. Yes, thanks for pointing that out. Um, but I'm, at, I'm sitting on a beanbag. <laughs> right. And I've just realised that if I move mm, even a little bit, yeah. there's a little bit of background noise, a little bit of white noise. You better not move then. No, I shall have to sit very still for the duration of the podcast. But of course, you'll be so fascinated and captivated by the content that you won't move. <laughs> right. Well, on that exciting note, shall we record pod 10? Pod 10! <laughs> Hello, partners. You are listening to the Jerry Henderson podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Cheerio. Cheerio. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. It's pod 10! We're in. It's that time of the week. We've made it to it's double digits. Morning. Double, <laughs> double digits. digits. I know, that's great, isn't it? I think that's exciting. I think that's a real milestone. Oh, well, I think you're probably right. We should have really brought some champagne or something. A bit too early, perhaps? Maybe some uh, schlur, perhaps, sort of. Uh, some schlur. Does schlur still exist? Schlur does still exist. Schlur is the drink you give your kids when you have a party. The soft drink you have, for you know... grown ups. I remember the adverts, but it feels very <laughs> 90s, schlur. Well, hey, that's me all over. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, 90s James. Uh, nothing if not 90s. <laughs> yeah. Here we are with pod, pod 10. Yes. I mean, this is, it's amazing, isn't it? People are still listening. Well, more people are listening now than when we started, which is yeah. equally surprising. Yeah, and uh, uh, quite a relief, I'd say, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. If we had declining listening figures, then we should probably uh, yeah. do something else. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah no, Here we people are. listen to us in their cars on the way to work. They do. Uh, doing other doing their chores at home. Eating, yes, other chores, cleaning the bathroom, yeah. etc. So. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you must be desperate. A little insight into people's lives, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you've already, well, I've already said, or you've already said you're Richard James. Have I? I think you said that. Oh, well, I have in previous weeks, probably. Yeah. They know by now. You're Richard James. James. Who am I? Yeah. Well, you must be Jamie Anderson. That's it, done. Yeah. Thanks for joining that's us. That's easy, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And what's happening in our podcast, Richard? Ah, well, I mean, it's all the usual exciting stuff, isn't it? Uh, we've got some fantastic listeners' emails that have been sent in to podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk since the last time we met. Lots of them, uh, again. Yeah, lots and lots of them. Again, we don't have time simply to read them all out, uh, so we do pick a few choice ones that come in during the week uh, and read them out in the, in the podcast. Uh, so we have lots of emails. We have... Um, uh, Chris Dale, of course, has returned with his randomizer, uh, whereby he is uh, sat down in front of a random episode of a Jerry Anderson series uh, to give us his uh, hilarious thoughts and, and comments. Uh, we also have another fantastic interview. This week, it's very, very interesting, Jamie. Who do you have? Well, it's a little bit different because so far we've had celebrity fans and people who've worked on the shows and voiced on the shows, that sort of thing. Um, but this week, it's Tim Beddoes. A name hmm. that lots of you may not know, but you might know the name of his company, Network Distributing, or you may also incorrectly call it Network DVD. Ah, uh, oh, right. <laughs> Tim, okay. Tim may have a small rant about that in the interview. Um, so <laughs> Tim is the is the boss man, the MD, the uh, CEO. Uh, I don't know, Lord mm -hmm. of the Manor uh, of Network. Yeah. Um, Likes to think so anyway. Exactly. Uh, that's yeah. the company behind all of your favourite Jerry Anderson releases and HD restorations. So things like the recent wow. Captain Scarlet uh, Blu-ray box set and various mm -hmm. volumes and the upcoming Joe 90 Blu-ray. And yeah. I just wanted to talk to Tim about the, the process of how it's all done, why Network do all this Jerry Anderson material when probably when it's not that commercially viable. Anyway, look, Tim gave us lots of in interesting insights and also some hints about what might come in the future in terms of home entertainment releases. 
Oh, specifically Jerry Anderson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. Ah, well, okay. That's what we're here for. Absolutely, yeah. Anyway, it's a really interesting chat. And I think a lot of people also, they hear things like uh, Negs and Interpos and Prince and 16mm and 35mm. And maybe it doesn't actually mean that much to you. Uh, yeah. So we, I also got him to talk us through what these things actually mean and why they, you know, the, the material that, that is there for remastering affect the the quality of the end product. So it, right. it was, it, yeah, really interesting and different chat. Uh, but you want yes. to listen to some uh, sort of micro exclusives there too. Uh, micro exclusives, <laughs> but like teeny tiny exclusives. Yeah, exactly. I just didn't want them to sound like. <laughs> Epic, yeah. you know, huge yeah, sure. news. Uh, they're yeah. little like, exciting nuggets, I think, Great. for Jerry Anderson fans. So that's lovely. Interview with, uh, with Tim Bellows coming up later in the podcast. So I'd like to just look back a little bit, Jamie. We very often mention Benji Clifford, who uh, has uh, Benji who? Uh, put together our... Yes, yes, exactly. Our fantastic um, uh, montage, uh, musical montage mm. at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, well, I was just wondering, we never really broached the subject of what's in there? What themes are in there oh. exactly? Now, so I had a bit of a listen. Yeah, go on. What have you heard? Course. What have you heard? Well, I've heard it starts off, well, before anything really gets off the ground, we have a little space precinct intro, little building string, sting, thing, the string, thing, yeah, sort string of thing. build. And then, are we straight into Terror Hawks? No, there's a little Thunderbirds loop ah, in there. Right. Together with a five, four, three, of course. two, one. Two, that's, one. That's along the little the Thunderbird string rift. And then, string then rift. it's Then, yes. Terror Hawks. Terror yeah, Hawks. It is, isn't it? But then what is the... It's uh, uh, White as Snow. It's, a, it's an incidental theme from Captain Scarlet. Is it? Um, but normally, it's it's much quicker. Benji slowed it right down to fit in, and it just I it see. sounds quite cool. Yes. And then you're into yeah. the final sort of eight yeah. bars of Terror Hawks, four bars That's of Terror right. Hawks. I see. Yeah, with a few little clips in there, voice clips. Yeah. It's very cool, isn't Spectrum it? Spectrum is green. Yeah, it's very good. It's really nice, really catchy. I mean, we do get a lot of emails from people saying they've, they've been whistling it all week. Yeah. And it does, it goes through my head. I have it as my ringtone on my phone now. I used to be Doctor <laughs> Who and now it's that. So thank you, Benji. <laughs> yeah, Benji's great. I suppose we should, we should point out, of course, that they, Benji does a rival podcast with Nicholas Briggs. He does two we, rival podcasts. Ah, well, we shouldn't mention it at all then. No, he does the Big Finish podcast and the uh, yes. Benji and Nick show, but we shouldn't talk about uh-huh. either of those. No, no, don't mention either of those. No. Uh, very good. So that's what's coming up uh, in store for the next, well, I don't know how long. It could be hours. Um, <laughs> so remember, you can get in touch with us. Uh, send us your comments and thoughts and uh, reviews, if you wish mm. to, podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. You can please uh, subscribe, rate uh, and review on whichever platform you're listening and uh, share with your friends so everyone else can join in too. Yeah, more and more people discovering us by the week and saying they're very happy to have discovered it, which is lovely. Uh, Absolutely Nobody right. said uh, they're disappointed to have discovered it yet, right? No, well, I don't think they'd take the trouble to do that, would they? I don't know. Perhaps there are millions of them. Yeah. You know what <laughs> we'll Twitter's like, though, with sort of trolls oh, and that sort yeah, of thing. Don't... So we've been all right so far. Uh, also, I should just say that, uh, Jamie, you post them onto YouTube, don't you? Yes. It might be that you're uh, listening again... to it on YouTube right now. Hello, yeah, YouTube. Exactly. Where, again, we get we get a few hundred other listeners and people commenting underneath. Yeah. For example, uh, Nan Bread Nacho said, uh, absolutely loving these podcasts so far. Hope they get the detention. The detention. Back to my school days now, you see. <laughs> Freudian slip. Hope they get the attention they deserve from a 16-year-old fan. Brilliant. That's fantastic, isn't it? All um, generations. Yeah, I was having this yeah. discussion with somebody the other day. It may have been you, Richard. But mm-hmm. the, there are so many people who say, uh, oh, Jerry Anderson, that's my childhood. And you mm. might expect it to be people who grew up in the 60s. But it's not. It's sure. people who grew up in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. <laughs> it was amazing how many generations view Jerry Anderson as being part, a major part of their childhood. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. That's really good. Uh, so that's what's coming up from us. Uh, but first... I think I can see Thunderbird 4 <laughs> pulling into view. Yes! Hi, Gordon Tracy speaking. It's time for the Jerry Anderson News. Time for the news. Uh, yes, it's the Jerry Anson news. Yeah, I sound a bit more excited than you do, Jerry. Sorry. Come on, let's try that again. It's time for the news. The Jerry Anderson news. <laughs> there you go. Is that better? There you are. I, I, if you can fake sincerity, you've got I it. I always mate. did a bit too much there. I feel a bit <laughs> knackered now. Uh, so, after last week's breaking news, wow. I have a follow up story. 
Oh. <laughs> not that we're not talking about the, the kitten. We the are kitten, talking about the kitten, Diana, <laughs> who last week in last week's episode we revealed is not a girl but in fact a boy, so is now Di. Yes. So yes. Di the cat, who is massively rejected by all of the current cats, the cat oh. population here, is now best friends with them. Oh, well, that, that is a relief. Yeah. And, I know we've been on tenterhooks about this all week. Yeah, constantly playing, having a great time, mm. and she's one. Of the, mm. He is one of the gang now, but, so yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. Great, there you go. Great, and that's the okay. end of the breaking news. Right, <laughs> and that's the end of pod ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't go away. We do have some real news. Yeah, I've, actually, I've got a cute picture of uh, Di and Kathy playing. Uh, okay. So I'll put that on the show notes. Uh, <laughs> this sounds like a whole other podcast now, if you say that. But carry on. The, well, the <laughs> Richard and Jamie Cat Show. Let's not do it, no. OK. Hey, there's a market there. On to the serious uh, Jerry Anderson oh. news. Yes. I'm very pleased to say that the Firestorm pilot mini-sode has been released to Kickstarter backers. Yes. And uh, Fantastic. And what a lovely response we've had. Oh, wow. Hasn't Brilliant. it been amazing? It must be- you must be completely chuffed about it. Well, it's just taken so long to get that pilot out there through um, yeah. through lots of difficulties and uh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And it's finally there and the response has been just magical. So yeah. thank you, backers. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't know what Jerry Anderson's firestorm is, then... Well, where have you been? Where have you been? Uh, we talk about it every week. We do, but I'll just, just in case they don't, yeah. uh, firestorm was an original idea Dad had in 2001. We've gone back to his original story outlines, his original synopsis, all that sort of stuff worked it up into a uh, a new kind of refreshed version i guess yeah and we're making it in ultra marionation which is the mm. the next step in evolution of super marionation so it's puppets miniatures practical effects everything physical everything you loved about the 60s super marionation shows but brought bang up to date um we funded through kickstarter a uh, a sort of pilot short episode a minisode um, yes, which my phone will. still hasn't learned it still tries to auto correct it to minnows or something weird <laughs> anyway look we we're now going out to to broadcasters to svod platforms like netflix and amazon and saying look here it is and people are yeah. loving it we yeah. also want the wider jerry anderson world to see it because there are lots of people who missed the kickstarter didn't know about it have learned about it since Sure. Uh, and so we are going to make that happen in due course. Great. No dates as yet, but if you want to follow our progress, and I would love it if you would, then there are several places you can do it. Uh, mm-hmm. If you go to the Jerry Anson website, jerryanson.co.uk forward slash firestorm, obviously, mm-hmm. or one word, mm-hmm. that's the best place, and there's links to everything else from there. But if you want to like us on Facebook, we are Firestorm HQ on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Firestorm HQ on Instagram. And if you'd rather follow us on Twitter, we are SF9Firestorm. That's Sierra okay. Foxtrot 9 Firestorm. Excellent. And all will become clear as to why it's named that in due course. But yeah, do follow and uh, you'll find out more about the, the show, the premise, the puppets, the crew yeah. involved. There's so much to show you and so much to share with oh. you. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd love it if you could. Uh, I mean, Jamie. I mean, I'm one of the you know the lucky ones to, to have seen it, and it is absolutely amazing. What you? I know lots of people have posted about you know sending shivers up down their spine, and uh, people are absolutely enthralled by it. I think a couple it. of and, people you know, said that it brought them to tears, which is I mean yes. in a good way. In a good way, I should add. Well, yes. Which was which <laughs> yes. is brilliant, and it. I can't believe I backed this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is incredible. It's incredible, Jamie, and I think that absolutely it deserves to go on to great success, and I'm sure it will. Fingers tightly sure in crossed. You, well, you're in the mini-sode, aren't you? So, <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, it would be embarrassing if you weren't in it now. Well, you, it would be, be It would be really right? awkward recording the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. speaking of podcasts... <laughs> oh, yes. I know we mentioned a rival podcast earlier on. I'm going to mention another rival podcast right now. What, what is this? I, Free advertising for other podcasts? Well, it is today. I'm feeling very charitable. Uh, yeah. I forgot to mention this. It happened many weeks ago, but I did a, a, a lovely guest appearance. I mean, it was lovely for me to do. I'm not saying the interview was lovely in terms of what I said, but I had a lovely time being interviewed for the Two Geeks, Two Beers podcast. Uh-huh. Uh, it was brilliant. We chatted through kind of a chronological history of everything yes. Jerry Anderson. Had a great time doing it. I mean, I did go on a bit, 
quite a lot. It's you did. I've listened to it. Oh, you oh do no, it. you don't. Yeah. Oh, I'm so no, it's interesting. It's fascinating. It's got, it's I really think it's good. got slightly sweary as well. Uh, so wow. if you if you don't like that sort of thing, then don't listen. But you know, beers yeah. were involved and all that. But yeah, I, what was so I interesting and, and lovely about it, if you don't mind me saying, was that whole chronological thing. You took it almost production by production, yeah. right, right from the from the very early days through to sort of Lavender Castle and New Captain Scarlet and so on. I did have to yeah. force them to mention Lavender Castle, though, didn't I? <laughs> You did. You had to drag it out of them. I know. Terrible. Anyway, oh. give that a listen. Uh, it was it was great fun. Um, if you mm. don't have haven't already had enough of me and Richard from this podcast, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I mentioned last week too about the Fab World of Jerry Anderson at the National Space Centre on the twenty second and twenty third of September. Yes. You know, I'm just confirming because they oh, put yes. it on their website now. I'm going to be there on the twenty third, the Sunday. Oh, um, are you? Yeah, and also across the weekend, Chris Thompson, who does lots of our lovely design work and animation and <coughs> created the stained glass Dalek for Big Finish with me mm-hmm. uh, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, Andrew Clements, or AC, who does a lot of our video mm-hmm. work and website stuff and the newsletter. They will also be there uh, with the, the Jerry Anderson store, which will have a physical Great. presence on the day. Uh, yeah. So, yes, do book that date in your diary. Uh, Lovely. That's uh, September the twenty third. Twenty second and third. I'm only there on the twenty third oh, though. But I Shane gotcha. Rimmer and Matt Zimmerman are there all weekend, I believe. And oh. and Lee Sullivan, which uh, you previously oh, said was disappointing. So, uh, right. I was saying. <laughs> and remember that other date for your diary, <gasps> Saturday the twenty seventh of October in London. If you can make it, no further details at this time. But yeah, I mean you you know you might be able to draw conclusions about it possibly right. from what we're talking about generally, but I don't want to be any more specific at this time. Okay. Yeah? So 27th right. of October in London, probably around lunchtime. You know, be there if you can. Yeah, uh, nice. And that's it for the news for this week. Well, that's enough to be going on with, isn't it? All sorts of goodies there. Mm. Particularly exciting uh, news about uh, about Firestorm there. Obviously, yes. Very, yeah. very cool. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the 23rd of September. I, yeah, I'm just seeing where I am. See if I can make it because I, I do like to get a free ticket to a show, you know, a convention. <laughs> but it looks like I'm in, uh, I think I'm in Ipswich on the 23rd of September. Well, yeah. that's a long way yeah. away from. Uh, it is. I might do. Oh, I've got an 11 o'clock show in the morning. Oh, so you could make it down for the afternoon. Yeah, possibly. Aren't you doing a Jerry Anderson podcast live yeah. recording yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Okay. Let's talk we'll about have that. A chat. That'd be fun. Great. Uh, there we are. So there's the news for this week. Remember, you can get in touch with us anytime you like on podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk and we will do our best to read your emails out. We've got lots of emails coming up from listeners uh, shortly. We've also got the randomizer from Chris Dale, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, we've got a few other comments from Twitter and uh, YouTube that I've made a note of over the last week or so. Oh, bless you. Um, pardon? I said bless you for doing that. Oh, well, that's the, ac- the least I can do, Extra Jamie. lengths that you go to. Oh, well, I'm known for my extra length, as you know. Um, so, uh, having said all that, now, we do have some further news. I think there's still the giveaway, isn't there? Ten days left to enter for this month, is that right? You're absolutely right, Richard. I don't know yeah, where you get your information from, but you're extremely accurate. Uh, yes. yes, the Jerry Anderson giveaway uh, at jerryanderson.co.uk slash giveaway. I almost forgot what it was then. Uh, you could yeah. win up to £200 worth of Jerry Anderson prizes, and we will do our best to tailor it so it fits with your collection and you're not doubling up on things or getting things you don't want. If you hate Four yeah. for the Fools, we won't give you a Four for the Fools DVD, etc. Um, That's right. That's not amazing. that anybody would hates Four Feather Falls, obviously. <laughs> Uh, so yes, do go and enter it and you can get more entries by doing various things like following us on Twitter and Instagram uh, and reviewing the podcast, that sort of thing. So Indeed. get to it. Indeed. Ten days to go. So uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Jerry Anderson TV or Richard N. James or I'm Jamie Anderson. Uh, Melvin got in touch with Twitter and said, do you like Jerry Anderson, supermarination or puppet stuff in general? Enter Jerry Anderson's amazing giveaway competition to possibly win £200 of prizes. And also, you really should be listening to the Jerry Anderson podcast. Oh, gosh, what a well, nice plug. And isn't that right? You should be listening to the Jerry Anderson podcast. And of course, you can hashtag us on uh, Twitter, hashtag Jerry Anderson podcast, so that we can all see what you're thinking. Yes. Although if it's rude, then don't hashtag yeah. it, please. You don't want <laughs> yeah. to see that. Yeah. Our egos right. are too fragile. <laughs> they really are. Uh, time for some listener emails. Mm, I think that's exactly where we should go next. Let's do it. So I have an email here from uh, Down Under. Now, this is from Megan. Uh, Megan says, greetings from Down Under, gentlemen. Uh, I've just gotten around to listening to Pod 6, featuring one of my favourite musicians, Gary Newman. Uh, and you were speaking about Jerry Anderson toys. 
As a lifelong Thunderbirds fan, the one toy I had always wanted was a model of Tracy Island, aka my dream home. Well, really <laughs> well, sadly, my childhood came and went with no Tracy Island being a part of it. But in 2016, after six and a half years of studying, I graduated from university with an undergraduate BA in psychology and sociology. As a graduation gift, my mother bought me not only Tracy Island, but the action figures and vehicles. Excellent mothering there. That's amazing. Uh, isn't that fantastic? I also wanted to thank you for the retrospective video on the career of Shane Rimmer. Uh, Shane has always been a favourite of mine, but aside from Thunderbirds, Doctor Strange, Love and Rollerball, I never realised he was so prolific. And by the way, Richard, I've just binge-watched all of Space Precinct in one sitting as I was intrigued by it, and I don't remember seeing it down here as a child. I hope it'll come out on DVD so I can add it to my almost complete Anderson DVD collection. Keep up the great work, gentlemen, and long live the Anderson legacy. From a fan from Down Under, and that's from Megan. Well, lots of lovely stuff there. Thank you yeah, so much, thanks, Megan. Yeah, Megan. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right about Shane Rimmer. Uh, and uh, Megan's mentioned watching the retrospective video there of the career from of Shane Rimmer, which of Chris. course can be seen on the Jerry Anderson website. Yes, for the, in our Beyond Anderson mini series. Yeah. So yeah. do go and check that out. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, lovely, lovely got the Tracy <clears throat> Island as well. I yes. mean, uh, you know, t t that's, I think, one of the only toys in history to be the number one Christmas toy twice in a decade. Wow, is that right? Yeah, 90. Two, 91, 92, ah. and 2001, two, whenever it was. I see. I always get that yeah. date wrong. Um, That's incredible. Yeah. Now, Jamie, she also said there that she hopes that the uh, Space Precinct DVD will come out. Now, now will this be available in Australia? I don't know. Uh, we know now that um, Network are releasing the uh, Space Precinct DVD in November, I think, of this year, but... Um... Yeah, rest of the world, uh, that's um, with another company. So uh -huh. that'll be up to them. Yeah. Um, it's possible. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, as, as I will discuss with Tim Bellows in our interview later on, Network, Network are one of the few companies that are bucking the trend of declining DVD and Blu-ray sales. So there are lots of companies who, well, mm. who are closing down their DVD and Blu-ray uh, divisions because they right. don't think that physical media is still selling. But I disagree. Yeah. I see. I think it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully, Megan. But the best thing you can do, as with all these requests, is email a provider in your area. So I would email Madman Entertainment and Umbrella, uh, mm -hmm. who both service Australia, New Zealand, and nudge mm -hmm. them. And if they want contact details, we can get them. So yeah, there we go. Great. Thanks, Megan. Mm, um, I've got one here, Richard. Mm. The introduction of which will probably make you very happy. <laughs> right. This is from Stephen, Stephen Carson. Yeah, oh, my, he says, yeah. Hi, Richard and Jamie. Ah, now here we are, finally. Someone has seen sense. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we'd get there in the end. And then yeah. there's a question directed to you immediately. Uh-oh. Richard. Yes? Great news about Space Precinct DVDs coming out. My question is, did you keep any souvenirs, in inverted commas, which makes them seem like, uh, they, like they might be stolen, any souvenirs right. from making Space Precinct? Well, I know the answer to this. Yes. Because, well, at least one of the items is in your downstairs loo. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, I did um, I did keep some, uh, in inverted commas, souvenirs. Uh, I think on the last day of filming, uh, I mean, I, I, sh I shudder to admit this, really. I don't think I ever asked anyone if I could take them. <laughs> but I just thought, well, listen, if they make another series... You know, if I'm lucky, I might be in it. So I could just, you know, bring everything back. Uh, but yes, Stephen, I do indeed. I have my Orin shirt, my uh, space police shirt. Uh, I have my name badge, my Orin name badge with the number and the shield on. I have uh, the item to which Jamie is referring is the uh, the, uh, the gun and the Multicom. Uh, Great selection. Yeah, and I did for a little while have a, what we used to call a background jelly head, which was one of yes. the uh, background uh, sort of supporting artiste alien heads. Uh, they didn't have any animatronics in them because they weren't required to move. It was literally to sort of wipe the screen in the background. Uh, but they sort of corroded over the years and I think ended up being thrown away. But I do have a tarn head as well, which has survived um, a little bit better that uh, I remember taking on to a couple of conventions a few years back. So yes, Stephen, a good few souvenirs. And I have my crew jacket, of course. Of course. You. Or as I like to refer to it, my pension. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that you is a totally fair name for it. <laughs> uh, Stephen goes on. 
Jamie, love the Minnesota Firestorm. Can't wait to receive the rewards. Hope you get a series made. Well, so do we. Yes. Yes. My question for Jamie is, I see a lot of teasers from the Thunderbirds 1965 guys. Are you involved in the projects they're working on? Uh, Enjoy the podcast. Keep up the good work from Stephen Carson. Uh, Stephen, we're not. We're not involved. No. But... It's very exciting, and you know, from what they've done before, you know that something great is going to come out come out of it. So, mm. we wait news with bated breath, as do you. Yes. But so the Thunderbirds nineteen sixty five sort of project was taking old um, uh, vinyl LP recordings of um, uh, episodes and putting visuals to them. Exactly that. And releasing them. Exactly yeah, that. Yeah. Lovely. So let's see what they come up with, and we'll yeah. we'll wait here as soon as we know more. Obviously, we'll let yeah. you know. Uh, very good. Uh, Andrew Sierra got in touch, says, Dear Jamie and Richard. I mean, correct, here we go again. Correct. No, you see, I think if it's an alphabetical thing, I've re- I'm going to change my stage name, I think, and I'm going to be Aaron Aardvark. And that will avoid all confusion. Well, I will who should be change first. my name to hyphen Jamie hyphen Anderson, <laughs> which I think technically puts them above the letter A. So, uh, uh, Andrew says, first of all, it would be an absolute honour to say that I absolutely love the Firestorm pilot Minnesota, uh, from the advanced ultramarination puppet techniques and Thunderbird style character designs to the cinematic visual and practical effects. Wholly reflective, which captures the spirit and essence of the Anderson classics. I honestly cannot wait for the full series to appear on our small screens when the time is right. Well, let's hope that's soon, Andrew. So, on to my main question regarding the Kickstarter rewards. Would you consider setting up a temporary online store for rewards and add-ons, for example, DVDs, Blu-rays and script books, just in case there are any spares? All the best with an FAB and an SIG from Andrew Sierra. Well, thank you for the lovely Mm. comments, Andrew. Yeah. Very pleasing to see that, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. In terms of extra bits and pieces, I'm very keen that those who backed the original Kickstarter feel a sense of exclusivity which they obviously deserve because they yeah. put some money <laughs> up early on before anything before we really had anything to show mm. so it is very important to me that um the all you kickstarter guys feel like you have got stuff that's exclusive uh, and you do so yes. uh in the first instance i think it'll be if any kickstarter backers want uh, extra items then we'll make them available uh and beyond that, in time, possibly, we might make them available more widely. But, it, yeah, like I said, it's very important to me that uh, we treat our Kickstarter backers extremely well. Yes, indeed. So let's see. But, yeah. obviously, as usual, the news will be available here on the Jerry Anderson website, social media, etc. Yeah. So keep an eye. Yes. Richard, I've got an email here. Right. It's quite a long one. Oh, right. Shall I go and make a cup of coffee, then? Yeah, probably. Uh, it's <laughs> it's from Chris... Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris. Chris is another one who's sucking up to you a bit. Oh, that's what I'd like to hear. Hi, Richard and Jamie. Mm-hmm. Carry on. <clears throat> Thanks, Chris. I wanted to write and let you know that I'm really enjoying the podcast. I've been an avid listener from Pod One, and I'm now also catching up with the episodes of Fab Live on YouTube, all of which oh. is drawing me back into the worlds of Jerry Anson. That's lovely to hear, isn't it? Yeah, drawing him back. Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, I'm a first generation fan. I was a bit too young for Torchy and Four for the Falls, and vaguely remember Supercar, but my real interest started with Fireball XL5. We lived in Nottingham at the time, and in that ATV region, I seem to remember being on at 7 pm, strange scheduling for what was essentially a kids' show. I really enjoyed Stingray and then Thunderbirds, which was on Fridays at tea time. Funny how you remember mm-hmm. these things. <laughs> and it was a great start to my weekend. Captain Scarlet was probably my favourite. Just so many good ideas in there. By this time, I was also an avid reader of TV21. All my copies long since gone, I'm afraid. I was also oh. a big fan of Joe 90. Sorry, Jamie. Well, yes. look, Chris, I've warmed yeah. to Joe a little bit. I mean, Have and I recently photographed wearing that Joe 90 t-shirt, Richard. Yeah, so, true enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just catching up with new Captain Scarlet, which I think is excellent. And having now watched the Andacon 2014 panel feature, it makes one realise how much hard work and sheer love of the original show went into making it. Then criminally... I t- Sorry, I'm not sure I can say this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> original show went into making it, then criminally ITV hardly promoted it. <laughs> yeah, you see. Uh, I'm a Firestorm backer and I've just watched the mini-sode. I think it's brilliant and you should all be very proud of what you've created. And I noticed a few familiar voices on the soundtrack. Uh, um, uh, yes. Who could he mean? Uh, probably Nicholas not. Briggs. Probably not you. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be <laughs> yeah. Briggs. Uh, oh, anyway, Chris, that's, I'm so I'm so glad you're, you've enjoyed it as well. 
Um, I want to write so much more, but for now I'll just say that I really like the idea of a Thunderbirds Tracy family origin story. It's really popular uh, yes. with all the big film franchises at the moment, and I think it would be a great addition to the Anderson universe. I, ho- I heard Jamie talking about how difficult it is to get such big projects off the ground, but you can be sure there will be a lot of love for it out there. Keep up the great work. Best wishes, Chris. Yes, thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. I mean, it's a lovely idea, isn't it, the whole Origins thing? But uh, It would be yeah. great, but, uh, you yeah. know, uh, mm-hmm. the, the way things stand right now, and it's a great shame, I don't think that these things are going to happen. I would love to change that. Uh, and uh, Firestorm getting off the ground. Your tails uh, come into picture, Richard. <laughs> well, it's, not, it's not my tail. Is it? This is uh, Lady Penelope's just walked in. This is my tail. All right, hello. So you can, you can probably hear her padding about on the beanbag. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, oh, she's jumped off. I'll listen to that sound right. effect. Anyway, yes, if we can get Firestorm going, it's amazing how once you get one project rolling, it kind of opens the doors up for other stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. So let's yeah, see. I can imagine. Anyway, thank you, Chris Turner. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, I have one here from uh, from Martin. Uh, Martin Watton, I think that is, who says, Dear R and J, or J and R, hedging his bets. Covering all the bases. Very wisely. Uh, Loving the podcast. I'm listening to Pod 8 and the Lizo Mazimba interview. Ah, yes. Uh, Where you introduce the link between the worlds of Jerry Anderson and the works of Marillion. Uh, A link I'd never heard of before, despite being fans of both for many, many years. Mm. So there is a Jerry Anderson Marillion crossover. That's interesting. Well, clearly, of one person. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Uh, a quick internet search brought up the fact that this had been previously referred to in a deluxe book edition of Marillion's classic Misplaced Childhood album. But unfortunately, I think there's one teeny tiny typo, unless Jerry had a beard and kept his job of being a former politician in Northern Ireland a secret, that is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, no, not Jerry Adams. <laughs> Which is, I assume, there. Yes, uh, but that was a good. regular typo, you know. Was it? Yeah. Dear, oh dear. Yeah, Dad got very annoyed by it. Well, I should imagine so. Yeah, I never really uh, appreciated it as a kid, but no, uh, obviously it no. amuses me now. <laughs> yes, that's right. So that, that was the story that Lisa told us about. Um, oh, I think your dad gave him uh, some uh, Thunderbird-style ID cards for uh, uh, their video shoot at Round Bray Studios, isn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, in fact, Lisa very kindly tweeted us and said, thanks so much for having me as a guest on the Jerry Anderson podcast, had so much fun reliving so many childhood memories. So that's really nice, isn't it? I think that's what uh, many guests rather like, isn't it? Just uh, the opportunity to talk about you know it, what they grew up with. It's a and... giant nostalgia fest for all yeah, of us. That's right. Which is really nice, but combined with the <clears throat> new and, uh, well, the Jerry Anderson news. It's a great combo, I think. Yeah. I've given you yeah, another absolutely. one to read, Richard, if you're all right with that. You have. Now, this one is from, I think it's Cole Grayus. I'm not sure. Cole Grayus. C-O-L-G-R-U. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway. Hello, chaps. I'm enjoying the podcast. I listen to it every week on my journey to and from work. It's like having the pair of you in the car chatting at me while I'm stuck in traffic. You know, so it's chatting at rather than chatting to. <laughs> <laughs> I could think of nothing worse. Oh, dear. <laughs> My first Jerry Anderson memories are, weirdly, of the film Doppelganger or Journey to the Far Side of the Sun. I love that film and I watched it again recently and it's still good. Uh, my favourite of the series was Space 1999, though I must say in those heady days of three TV channels, any Jerry Anderson production was always a welcome treat. As a kid I had some of the toys, I had an Eagle, a Shadow Mobile, an SPV and my favourite, Thunderbird 2, though it was a light blue colour. Uh, I still have the SPV, but I've lost the others over the years. I wish I'd kept the Dinky Eagle, the one with the metallic green pods. I looked for one on eBay, but they cost a small fortune. Any chance of a reproduction version in the Jerry Anderson store? Uh, I did meet Jamie Anderson years ago at a sci-fi convention in the Leicester Space Center. When I say met, I was nerding out at the models of the Space 1999 sets when this fella sitting at the desk smiled and said, hello, and we had a little chat. Anyway, I came away thinking, what a nice fella, having no clue as to who he was. Didn't know it was Jamie, because the last time I saw him was in more than 30 years in the TARDIS, and he was much, much younger and had hair. <clears throat> so thank you for taking the time to talk to an old sci-fi fan who had gone into a convention on his own. Anyway, enough rambling from me. Keep podding, and I'll keep listening. Uh, regards, Cole Grace. Thank you very much. There we are. Bless you, Cole. You Thanks very much. Yeah, he remembers meeting you. And now, we need to talk a little bit about them, don't we, about um, uh, more than 30 years in the time. Do we just... really? Well, so this was the documentary uh, Kevin John Davis, I think, made about he the uh, 30th anniversary of uh, Doctor Who. And uh, there's a very, very sweet little clip of a, what, nine, ten? Eight-year-old me. Eight-year-old Jamie Anderson sitting on his father's knee. Uh, I was sitting on the arm of a sofa, actually. Thank you. (laughs) Telling him, much to his disgust, how much of a Doctor Who fan you were. 
Exactly. It's a very that. sweet clip. And it'll haunt you for years, yeah, won't it? Yeah, can never forget it. People always <laughs> remind me of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. all I said was a Doctor Who fan. Yes. But those words, yeah, continue to haunt mm. me even now. There you go, there you go. Anyway, thanks, Cole. Um, <coughs> pleasure meeting you at the Space Centre. I'm glad we had a little yeah. chat. Yeah. Uh, nice and that, next time I wear a wig to make it more obvious who I am. <laughs> <laughs> we should and could you wear the same clothes that you wear in more than 30 years oh that artist? lovely shirt and that retro Let's red tie recreate that look yeah, yeah yeah I can definitely <laughs> try that uh, anyway final email for this episode Richard and there's been so many already we're already well yes. over time uh, this one's from Tom Woods hi guys great podcast uh, I was amazed that I like Gary Newman thought that Fire Black Soul Fire was in colour and probably for the same mm. reasons as we discussed uh, last week on our advert Indeed. section um, yeah Got a question for you. Is there anywhere I can get the blueprints or schematics to scratch build any of the wonderful crafts created for the shows? I have all the Thunderbirds in plastic kits and most of the Captain Scarlet ones would love to start building them from wood or other materials regards to wood. P.S. Were you hmm. aware that Humberside Airport has a rather large Thunderbird 3? Ah. <laughs> well, yes. in reverse. Well, we were aware, in reverse we? request. Yes, we are aware of the Thunderbird 3 at Humberside and we've covered it in Fab Live, haven't we, Richard? Yeah. But also, yeah, have. I have quite recently emailed Humberside Airport and said, what's ah. the story? Yes, they came, can we have it? They, no, not can we have it. They came back and said, uh, we'll come back to you and let you know. And they right. haven't. Uh, oh. So, <laughs> oh, very busy people. Hopefully, Humberside Airport, somebody will come back and tell us more about Thunderbird 3. Um, yeah. Tom, in regards to the uh, blueprints and schematics, there are a few fan-drawn editions around. Uh, Terrorhawks, I think there was an official set of blueprints released. But in general, no. They aren't available, but there are brilliant model builders like David Sisson. Uh, mm. You should check out his, his work. Just search on Google or whatever search engine you want to use for David Sisson mm -hmm. models. He's got lots of brilliant pictures up there about his builds. And there are blueprints and stuff around, but um, yeah. nothing official as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So there you go. Good nice. luck building. Yeah, that's really exciting. That's very nice. Uh, I have a quick comment here from uh, YouTube. I've been mentioning a few from, from YouTube uh, this week. Uh, John Michael Dorian got in touch after watching one of our podcasts on the uh, Jerry Anderson YouTube channel. Said, hi, guys. Thanks for the fantastic podcast. I loved the Sophie Aldred interview and her love for Thunderbirds. I had a massive crush. Well, OK, I fancied Ace in Doctor Who. Uh, she sounds lovely. <laughs> and David Graham, what a legend. And it brought a huge smile on my face when he did Parker, Gordon Tracy and Brains. Keep up the good work. and looking forward to the next one. Yes, so uh, there's lots of love there for some previous uh, interviewees, which yeah. is always nice to hear. Yeah, we've had some lovely people. Very lucky. Yeah, we have. And of course, you can catch up with them all by uh, listening to our old episodes. If you subscribe, you can uh, check back on what uh, we've done before. Uh, you can find them all on the Jerry Anderson website. You can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher it's or Spotify. Bonkers, isn't it? Or... I mean, it's almost yeah. harder to avoid us than it is yes. to actually find the podcast now. Then our plan is working. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So do uh, don't forget to rate and review and subscribe and tell all your friends about us and follow us on Twitter and hashtag us on Jerry Anderson Podcast and email at uh, Jerry Anderson at Podcast. All right, Richard. I think I, I think they get I the message now, right? Yes, I think you're probably right. I should calm down and go and lie down in a dark room. Yeah. <laughs> so, Richard, I think it's probably time we moved on to our interview for this week. Yes. I mean, obviously, yes, how interesting. you're very pleased with Network because of the Space Precinct connection. Have you got any other Network DVDs at home? Are you a classic kind of film and TV man? Do you know, I, I'm, 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 I think I am. But as you know, I mean, at least for the last sort of three and a half years, I just, I've barely been home, really. That's true. I've got a stack of DVDs, old films, old series, that uh, I'm looking forward to my, making my way through. This is almost wishing unemployment on myself, which is a terrible thing for an actor to do. But I am looking forward to a bit of time to sit down and watch something. Anything will do. But Network are brilliant, of course, because they're bringing all this old stuff that we remember from our childhoods back to life in pristine condition mm. for us to view again, which is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. Well, I had a lovely chat with Tim. Uh, of course, it was uh, not in a studio, but over... Yeah, over lunch. Uh, no, no, it wasn't yes. over lunch. It was over coffee. Was... It was over coffee. Oh, oh fair enough. Um, so, it's, again, a slightly noisy background, but, uh, again, hopefully you feel like you can pull up a chair and sit with us, uh, share an Americano with hot milk. Uh, oh, lovely. Or whatever you want. Uh, yes. And, yeah, I, I just asked Tim about a little bit of everything, how Network got started, why they do what they do, um, and even what his favourite and least favourite Jerry Anderson shows are. And you will be uh -oh. shocked by his least oh, favourite. No. I'm worried You now. really will. Don't worry, oh. Richard. You don't have anything to worry about. 
<laughs> it's another one. Anyway, uh, here we go. It's uh, Tim Beddoes and Network. So uh, I'm Tim Beddoes. Uh, I'm the managing director of Network, Network Distributing. Is that what you want to be referred to as? Because yeah. people call you Network DVD and Network uh, on no, its own. No, it's and... definitely not. No, no, it's definitely not <laughs> Network. <laughs> DVD. No. Um, I shouldn't say this because that's probably uh, that's probably inviting people to call this network DVD. But I absolutely yeah. hate it. Network distributing. Network distributing. Okay. And what and what do network distributing do for those who aren't in the know, Tim? Because there will be people who say I've never heard of network. Uh, Unbelievably. Which is which is partly the way we like it, to be honest. <laughs> Um, right. Okay. Well, well, we I, we've been doing this for 21 years now, so we. Um, What's this? Well, <laughs> give me a chance to explain, because <laughs> uh, you're assuming that a lot, of, most of your listeners know what we do for for a living. But yeah. for those who don't, uh, we we started out as a, a video um, publisher distributor. And we moved into DVD and then Blu-ray, and we we started doing a bit of theatrical work. So we went to places like film festivals uh, to acquire films. Um, uh, and 21 years ago, uh, I set the label up with a, a very specific brief to to license content that had been overlooked or forgotten or, mm. or deemed uh, lost. Uh, because we I actually had for some reason I had this 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 um, extensive knowledge of old TV programs and old films and where they reside and, and, and what have you and, and and a lot of the industry had ignored these, these shows so things like the events of Robinson Crusoe and uh, these old public information films Charlie says yeah we did a compilation of those and um, surprisingly they were um, not surprisingly to me but I think surprisingly to the, to the retailers they they actually sold in droves yeah and I, I kind of knew we were onto something then so uh, we started approaching the likes of um, well, what was then Carlton, but is, is now ITV uh, and the BBC, and we, we slowly uh, built up our stock of uh, titles that most people never even heard of, uh, in, in all honesty. Uh, but I knew that there were thousands of people that remember these old shows. So things yeah. like Department S and Strange Report, we suddenly started uh, uh, distributing those those shows, and and they they notched up some sizable sales, and it's just taken us from strength to strength over the years. And we did a we did a large output deal with ITV in 2004, which kind of gave us the keys to the rest of the archive. We okay. then. Well, probably 80% of the are. And did that include some of the Jerry Anderson titles? It did, yeah. yes. Okay. All the black and white stuff. All the black and white stuff, right, okay. Yeah. None of the colour stuff. Okay. Except, uh, actually, that's not entirely true. So they gave us the Secret Service. I don't know why you're laughing about the Secret Service. I love the Secret Service. Well, I do. I, I have a soft spot for bits of the Secret Service. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But not all of it. No. Uh, so, well, you can see where this is heading. Though. So they gave us all the black and white series because uh, you know, there was no real perceived value yes. in anything that didn't have colour. So that's why we ended up with those. And the Secret Service, well, no one's ever heard of that. Uh, this was the perceived view. Yeah, I was going to say you're speaking to a niche audience here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so well, the wider the world. Secret Service probably a very niche yeah. audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> audience. Um, uh, but they did give us Space 1999 as part of the deal as well, so that was that was a bit of a... Um, no, uh, so they gave you Space 1999 as well? I, uh, well, I think I asked to have Space... Uh, you know, because we, yeah, we have to have a balance of products here, yeah. so uh, you know, we, we, we don't want to be seen as a sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, basement for where all this stuff uh, goes, where no one else wants to bother releasing, or, you because know, it's hard work doing this stuff, you know, any, anybody... I mean, really, anybody, it's easy to sell Thunderbirds because it already has a built-in reputation. It's its easy to sell 40 Towers. Uh, you know, all these big shows, anybody can do that. You have to work really hard to do some of the stuff that, that, that we put out. Yeah. Uh, but we enjoy it. We, we love the work. We know what, we, we know what we're doing with, this, with, with these archives. We're, uh, you know, 21 years later, we're a tr trusted pair of hands for this kind of stuff. And, um, uh, 
we still, after all this time, we still enjoy sort of getting our hands dirty with film cans and opening a film can and wondering what, what joys might... Um, or what junk is in there. Or what <laughs> joy or junk. You never quite know. That's the risk you, in your yeah, business. Until you open the can, you never, you never quite know. But it's always, it's always fun uh, finding out. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have basically become the purveyors of cult television and film. But 21 years ago, what was there such a thing really by today's standards as cult television and film? Well, that's always been such an indistinct term. I mean, that, that term was definitely around when I, when I started it. Yeah. I, I, it must be the mid 80s when I first heard that expression, but I mean, nobody really knows what it, what it means. Mm. You know, is it, is it a small well, audience? Is it a niche audience? Uh, is it a limited audience? Uh, yeah. Is it a cool audience? I, well, I think, it, I think it's generally something that perhaps had a limited original run, but built and maintained an audience since then, even if it hasn't had repeated viewings. To, uh, to some degree, because yeah, but the reverse also happens. I mean, you know, something that that was uh, that was really good in 1968. Um, you know, it, it could look really terrible now. Uh, and you know, it, it's yeah, but but something something cult from that era probably in my mind still has an audience that watched it for that, at that time and remo remembers it so fondly that they then are very happy to hear that you put the thing out on DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah, that, that, that is true. I, for those that, that know me, I mean, we don't really talk about this work uh, uh, very much. We've always, we've always operated under the radar. Mm. We're, not, we're not really a, an industry player by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and... Uh, We've always done that. We've always done it. That, done that deliberately. We've never ever sort of um, you know, put ourselves out there as this as this fantastic label. We just release the stuff because I, I've always taken the view that uh, yeah, we don't actually produce anything. We just sell you know other people's content, other people's mm. creations. We don't um, we make it accessible. We're 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 a route to that content. Yeah, but, um, but making it accessible is quite a big deal sometimes. Well, we wouldn't have been here for all this time had we not had we not a done it and b done it reasonably well. Mm. Um, uh, and yeah, we we continue to defy industry expectations because you know, we never we never part of the sort of general mix. We never part of the uh, industry numbers. We we never go to the industry bashes at the end of the year. We don't take part in the industry awards. Uh, so it's it's you know for us none of that matters. It's it, you know, people stop buying the stuff. Then that's it. Yeah. You know, we don't need the industry to tell us you know, which way the trends are going because we know, we know where our, our own trend is going to start. Yeah. The the finest purveyors of of classic TV and film. I. You wouldn't describe yourself as that, but I, I think I, 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 think, I think your audience might. Like, uh, yeah. I, I. I. Well. I. It's interesting you say that now because. Um, one of the things uh, that is about to change, uh, we're very proud of our restoration work at the moment, and uh, I've never doubted that, that you know, the work that we do is, uh, is, is, is amazing. And when we did the first volume of Captain Scarlet, uh, we, we had a post bag about the quality of the restoration is like never before. I mean, it was just so mm. difficult to keep, to keep on top of. I mean, yeah. people were just going overboard with the comics. It and, looks amazing, yeah. You it know, was. some people said they're the best restorations they've ever seen. Yep. So I'm, you know, we, we it suddenly occurred to me, actually, you know, this work we do is amazing. Mm. And I think, having seen the pictures, I think we're the best in the world for it. I really do. I don't think there's anyone to touch the skill base that we've got. Yeah in house now for this for this type of content. I think you're quite right to blow your own trumpet in that department. Well the time has come. The time has definitely come for yeah. us to say to, to go out there and say look we're really proud of uh, uh, the work we do. Yeah. And uh, yeah I, I I don't have any problem. These are the best pictures in the world of this of this stuff. You're never gonna see anything better yeah. than what you need. And, I, and it's not me saying it really, it's, it's, it's all the fans of this stuff. No, and I completely agree, yeah. having seen the stuff, it's great. This it, it probably will sound like a daft question to you, but I know there are a lot of people 
who hear about a restoration or a remastering or whatever, and they don't really know what it means. Okay, so, so what, you want me to... Well, I, what is so different, for example, with, Cap with the Captain Scarlet HD restoration that you've done recently versus, say, for example, the DVD that's okay. been out for a long time? Right. It, you know, I can what's different about the chapter and verse on this? So, brilliant. Uh, bearing in mind that I'm not the actual uh, technician here, so we have a. Um, you uh, did none uh, of the work, but take all the glory. I'm going to take all the glory <laughs> on, on, on behalf of uh, our very modest uh, colorist, uh, yes. a guy called. Jonathan Wood, who we've worked with, uh, well, right from the start. He, Jonathan, uh, used to work at BBC Resources, and the first job he did for us as a company uh, was the day the Earth caught fire, the Val Guest science yeah. fiction thing from '61, and um, it, it's always been fun working with Jonathan. And uh, you know, this is his type of programming. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of giving him. You know, it's quite as giving him a modern feature film or yeah. you know a new commercial or anything because that's not you know you you've got to get the right people for the right content and the, I think one of the issues with um, colorists in general is that they're staff and they're they're paid to do anything really rather yeah. whereas you know we use our grades graders. Uh, specifically for the for the type of content that they are. I mean, these guys are artists. They they, they, yep. they, they, they really Absolutely. are, and uh, there are, there aren't that many good ones around to be honest for for archive um, mm. content like this. And Jonathan worked for the BBC for a long time, and then when they closed down the uh, the, the resources studio that they had in um, West Lyslip, I've always wanted to work with uh, Jonathan. Uh, so uh, we we set him up a network, and you know whatever he can't say for himself or doesn't want to say for himself, I, I'm more than happy to because you yeah. know, all credit to him. This guy is yeah. he's, he's a real artist. But I think people people who like uh, archive stuff, uh, especially Doctor Who and other bits and pieces, will, <laughs> I know how much you love Doctor Who, Tim. But they, they will have seen his name yeah. on the end credits for a lot of yeah. extra features, restoration yeah. work, anyway. Absolutely. So and Jonathan you know, is we've, is we've very always gone tied out of our way to ensure that he receives yeah. the credit. Uh, the, the, the due credit, not just him, it's Mandy, Mandy Whitby as well, she does a lot of the cleanup. And then we have uh, Mark Stambra, who used to work for ITV, I mean, his, his track record uh, goes back a long way. He's, he's one of the very few people that still knows about film in this, in this business. So, you know, the combined talent of these guys, yep. you know, we have, we have a producer who gets all the assets in, uh, we have a grader who, who grades them beautifully, and then we have um, uh, Mandy who does all the clean up and the, and the actual scanning. But in answer to your original question, yep. I am coming to this because I, you know, I have to give some Of course, some you want to give some credit to the people and say what, how good Absolutely. the team is that works on it. So the, different, the main difference between uh, the old Captain Scarlet, uh, the SD, and those pictures were pretty good. Uh, at the time, they were in the BBC resources, and I think Jonathan was there. I don't think he did Captain Scarlet. Uh, I think that was one of his colleagues, but he, he might have to correct me on that. Um, when we did the HD versions, we used those as, as a reference uh, mm -hmm. picture. But in terms of the technical process from there on, it, 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 it's completely different from, yeah. it just goes down a completely different route. So what Mark will do, Mark Stambra, he will, uh, before we do anything, we assess what assets are available. And we will always go back to the original neck, the yep. actual camera neck that was on the set, you know, in front of uh, uh, the puppets, yep. uh, you know, the Slash Studios. So that is literally the film negative that, that was exposed the, yeah. frame by frame yeah, yeah. to the sets, yes. comes out of the camera, yes. yep. and off, off it goes. Yes, okay. and there is only ever one of those. You yeah. know, for, I mean, they'll, they'll make back about assets, yeah. uh, such as uh, an Interpars and then an Interneg, but they're already two generations down there from that original neg, so yeah. we want to go back to the original You want to get the best possible source, and yeah. that's what people mean when they yes. say it's from the original negatives yes. and still negatives. That's yes. the sort of stuff that I think people hear it and they go, oh, I don't really know what that means. But. Yeah. No, that, that is, uh, yeah, this is what was shot. This is the next best thing to being on the set. Okay. The next years. best thing to the human eye it is, is yeah. this. It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's Jonathan's job then to bring that out. But before he gets 
to see a single frame of it, it has to go through a lengthy process. So we have to, Mark has to assess what assets are available. And 50 years on, not all the assets are always there. So occasionally there might be, there might be uh, one reel of neg. So like for Captain Scarlet, I think there are, there are at least three cans of picture neg, and there are three cans of sand neg. And then you'll get uh, cans with the, with the mag tracks. So for a sand source, we always go back to the mag tracks where possible. So you have all these, uh, uh, Mark will call down all the assets that he's gonna need to do the job. So it'll be the, it'll be the original neg. He'll bring down the backup assets, which will be the interpulse. Yeah. The interpulses were used in the original SD transfer. Yeah. Uh, 15 years ago. And what, what is an interpositive? An interpulse for, for those not in the know. It's a very fine grain color positive of that original negative. Yeah. So it's just like there's there's a slight variance in the in the, in the quality. You know, you still you're always going to get the best quality out of the original neg if there's if in in the absence of an original neg an interpulse will help you get the job done. Yep. And in a lot of cases, you, you, there's barely any perceivable difference. The important thing is there that that is a backup asset. And for yep. most jobs, most companies will pull out the cost. Uh, right. uh, we will always go back to the original neg yep. for the reasons that we already yes. discussed. So once all those assets arrive down uh, at the facility, the film will be inspected, it'll be ultrasonically cleaned, yep. which is a dodgy process in itself involving chemicals, and that gets rid of as much dirt and, and muck before it actually goes on the scanner. Yep. And then the film is uh, scanned reel by reel. In the case of Scarlet, it has to be conformed because although it's 35 millimeter neg, it's an AB roll checkerboard. So you have you have two rolls. Uh, a, you have an A roll and a B roll, mm -hmm. and then the A roll has um, one set of shots, and then when you cut to the next shot, it's on the B roll, and then you cut to the next shot, and it's back on the A roll. Right. All that has to be married up. People, nobody bothers explaining this stuff normally, so no, I think okay. a lot of people kind of they don't, they don't, they don't appreciate. Right, what Captain it Scott takes. is a bit is a bit unusual in that respect because uh, you know when you're dealing with original cut necks, it's usually just on one roll. Yeah. Uh, Scarlet and Joe 90, which we're working on at the yeah. moment. Uh, for some reason, they, they did it uh, A and B role. It's probably something to do with the lab process. Okay. Because obviously, they were dealing with film. Uh, it would have to, you know, all the all the effects would have to be um, printed in. So dissolves, fades. Uh, you yeah, that was that was all done in the optical printer at the lab stage. Uh, it was probably easier. The technology was probably easier to do it. To flip between the two. Yeah. Yeah. And then once it's been scanned in, it's, you, you get a raw, you end up with a raw scan, and then that's when Jonathan has to do, you know, his bit, and, and he'll bring every frame up to well, what you what you see now. Yeah. And he'll apply a process to get rid of a, a bit more dirt, and he'll con he'll also use uh, other software to control the grain within the film. Yeah. So you get uh, you you'll, you'll end up with uh, you know a uniform. Uh, picture with you know vibrant color yeah. and, and you know I it's another phrase I use a lot uh, by the time it's finished with it it's like looking through a window yeah um, you know they're, they're 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 just they're just beautiful yeah and exactly. then there are all sorts of hazards that are going to happen along the way you can't just open the can of film uh, put it on grade it uh, and then release it it's just not that simple because you know film degrades uh, splices the joints in the film they degrade they fall apart you know things get scratched uh, during the during the uh, pro I mean it's Quite hazardous handling it is, that. It is it's precious hazardous. stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, there is only gone, one leg. There that's is only it. One leg. Yeah, you can't replace that. So, um, you know, does it's, that mean you're well insured for handling these things too? Uh, we 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 are. <laughs> yes. But going back to you know, we're we're a trusted pair of hands. So, yeah, of uh, uh, you know, we we are. You know, ITV will 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 just give us this stuff. Assuming it's there, they will just put it on the van, send it down to London, and then we just do our stuff. So it's all it's all protected and everything. There's no yeah. way it's ever compromised uh, in the journey but yeah when I'm talking about this journey it is a long it's a big job yeah it's huge. you know and that currently we can't we can't output more than like a couple of hours a week finish of this stuff so yeah we are actually expanding the studio and we have the builders in this 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 weekend as it happens uh, to modify our studio 
um, to make the process a bit more efficient and to, to speed it up, but we're yep. not, you know, without compromising the quality or anything like that, we've just got faster software. Yeah. But it is a lengthy process, and it's not one that we undertake lightly because it's expensive yep. as well. And uh, you know, I know people complain when you know when we started this strategy about uh, of releasing them on the website volume by volume. Yeah. I mean, that was that had that, that was fairly strategic for a number of reasons. Uh, it does take so long to do, so when we did Random Hopkirk, it was like 26 hours there. Well, that's going to take the best part of six months. Yeah. So we can either start, you know, there's a part of us that actually wanted to get this stuff out to the audience as quickly as possible. So that, well, why wait 20, for 26 episodes when you can get the first four or five like now yeah. off the presses? Yep. And, you know, it, it cash flows the project because it's still an expensive project yeah. uh, uh, to do. So, you know, it helps us, it gets the fans. And we, the feedback we're getting at the moment is that, you know, the fans are getting like four episodes a month or something and they're watching one a week. Yeah. Which is the way they were designed to be watched. Absolutely, you know, yeah. When they, when they were originally. Uh, uh, originally went out so you know I kind of like the quirkiness yeah uh, it's actually but, nicely between the sort of binge watching yeah. contemporary model and the weekly serial yeah, model yeah. of television broadcast yeah. so yeah we, we, did, both camps. we did we did get a bit of stick um, but uh, you know I uh, again we, I mean we're fairly immune to the criticism uh, this sort of, yeah a because people are usually run over you know when they by see the, quality, the results right? by the quality yeah. and it's actually worth waiting for um, and b if it wasn't for us and if it wasn't for the way we do this stuff it, we just wouldn't get done this is not the, no, these shows right. are not a priority no. uh, for, for anyone and uh, you know it's, and it's a risky business for us yeah, we're, we're the ones that are taking the risks here yeah. really because it's, because it's expensive and yeah. it's time consuming and it's very resource heavy so I, I, I have to be sure that the titles I've picked to do this are going to sort of pay off for a second because at the end of the day I'm still running a business I love the work I love what we do Yeah. but it has to pay you know we can't we can't well, do it got, for nothing we're not <laughs> charity you've got employees to look after yeah and quite yeah we've all got, got living to earn and, yeah. and uh, well and know, in, a, in a market where people would essentially say that physical media is dying that's definitely not true to us no you you guys continue to do really well yeah. and you're probably yeah. partly responsible for keeping it afloat by keeping people interested by keeping churning out the capital I'd, I'd like to think so yeah not we, well, we've, so. you know, um, there's no sign of it slowing up for us uh, at all. Yeah. And yeah, the the, the scar, the box set that we've just done. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. We we uh, uh, you know we we try and do things a bit differently as well. So you know, um, I'm as a consumer. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't like things uniform. I don't like to see things all in a nice. <laughs> And I'm probably saying the wrong thing. Some people here. do like that. I know but... some people do like that. So you know, when we when we started uh, on this strategy of releasing sort of volume by volume, and then we gave away a free slipcase, and I think people were expecting that with Scarlet. Mm. And um, I mean, there are reasons why we didn't do that. Uh, one, it was a bit more interesting to do something a bit more special for Captain Scarlet. Absolutely. Because I think the subject was deserving. Yep. Beats more fun for everyone at the office. Uh, and see, I get bored easily. So it, 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 that's a great reason to do something differently. Yeah. Well, well it is. You know, I, I, I agree. Like to see a, a jumbled mess on my shelves <laughs> rather than you know 14 millimeter DVD cases all lined up nicely in chronological order or, or alphabetical order. So um, yeah, so that Captain Scarlet box set. I mean, that doesn't fit into anything. You can't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a really awkward shape. Yeah, but so are books. Look, books. Yeah. You know, I mean, every, you know, I, I, I've never understood why, um, you know, we weren't able to do it ourselves because we have to conform to, in, to the industry standard and, yeah. you know, retailers have got racks that yeah. are designed to hold a particular type of box. So we have to conform to that, otherwise we're not going to get the stuff stocked. But if I had my way, everything we do would have completely different packaging. <laughs> just, just like Just books. to be unique, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to be unique and just to draw attention a bit. And we're getting really good at it now because we you know, we work with so many partners on this stuff. Um, if there's, there's nothing that we can't do. And you know, we did, the ambitions for Scarlet were actually a bit more, uh, we actually planned a lot more uh, for it than actually went into the box. But 
I'm happy we didn't we didn't do that now. I'm happy that we scaled it down yeah. to the art cards, the comic, there's some original content in there. There's, uh, there's it's a, a lovely little package. It is it is a great which package. probably by the point this goes out will be sold out. Uh, it, yes. But if it, it hasn't sold out, get it you now. should immediately go and grab one. Yes. Because and there's only one place gone. you can get it from. There is only one place, <laughs> and that's the Jerry Anderson store. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for the helping with the plug there, Tim. That's, that's, that's really well, good. we sold out long ago. I mean, uh, you yeah. know, again, this is one of those things that just that just uh, keeps us going. You know, it's just nice to to do something a bit different. And yeah. The, yeah, but you know, it, the, it, the each time. Has been, Incredible. It reinvigorates yeah. the enjoyment and the fandom, which yeah. I really love. Because yeah, people no, are I, like, I, yeah, I bought my Captain Scarlet DVD set 15 years ago or whatever. Yeah, and, and they think that's it. Yeah. When they buy that, they think that that, that is the ultimate. And I've yeah. never really been one, uh, you know, again, my industry colleagues would, would, would be horrified at me saying this. But uh, I, you know, I don't like to have to re-release things over and over again. And, yeah. You know, I don't like to fleece the fans by no. re-releasing something that's been out before. Uh, you know, with with uh, you know just one tiny difference that is you know taking the piss enough for them to, to, to have to go out and buy it again. We've never been we've never been cynical like that, and we never no. would be. That's not we wouldn't be here if we if we operated no, uh, that way. But the other extreme, we got a lot of stick when we did Randall Hopkirk. Well, where are the extras? Yeah. You know, why why did you not put over the extras? And and, and, so, and you know I again we weren't really ready for that because for me the joy is in the in the in the series. Yeah. Uh, and it's enhanced by the incredible pictures that, that you're now looking at. That for me, you know, without the without the series there wouldn't be any extras anyway. But we did all that when we did when we did run pop the 10, 12 years ago, yeah. it was. We did all those extras. Then they're on the they're on the DVD. They're on the standard death. We just wanted to do something. Let's just go back to the basics here, you know. And, and again, it costs money to get all that to get all the assets back out. And you yeah, know, I understand. <laughs> There is no such thing as an ultimate box set. There's no such thing yeah. as a definitive set of, uh, of this sort of stuff. So, you know, we could have ported over all the extras for all the old, older editions of these shows that we've just remastered in HD now. Uh, and yeah, okay, you could say at that point, yeah, this is definitive until next week. Yeah, until something month, else comes out yeah, or then, someone that, finds that, something that, new. That for me, that's real. That, that's being really cynical about it. You can't, uh, you know, what are we supposed to do then? No, you know, people are going to start expecting those, what we've just discovered or something new. Uh, no, you could have draw a line and stuff yeah. somewhere and, and get back to the, the, you know, the essence, which is the show. Yeah, and making it look as beautiful as possible, yes. which you do very well. Yes, yeah. That was that for me. This whole remastering it, so that that for me is what it's what it's all about. It's yeah. it's, it's making that show look as good as it can possibly look. Yeah. And you know those pictures will never be superseded. You know will be long gone before anyone else does anything. Yeah. Any okay. And they look they look brilliant. So what, you've done Scarlet. Joe 90 is next. Yep. What's the timeline for Joe 90? Uh, roughly. Where hold you to roughly. it? Roughly. Well. I think the first volume is out the week of the 50th anniversary. What's that? 28th of September? September, 28th, something like that. End end of September. End of September. Okay. Yeah, I'll skip the difference. And then the second one, I think we've, we'll have a, at least a second, maybe a third one out before the end of the year. I know they're due to finish the entire series uh, of, of Joe and Man in the Suitcase, which we're working on simultaneously. Both those shows are, are finishing, I think, mid, mid-September. Okay. And then it's just up to the studio, then we'll get them out as fast as we can. It's not always easy because we have other considerations. We just... Uh, Okay, I was just going to be very indiscreet then about a few things that we've got coming up. I really shouldn't use this as a platform. But we're obviously, as a, as a business, we have other things going on. We yeah, have other producers to look after. So, yes, um, well, you've told me about some very exciting things you've got coming out, which we can't mention, but they're very cool. Two very exciting. Two very right. exciting things, yeah. And three, actually, three very exciting, because well, there's one I haven't told you about. Oh, wow, okay. Well, I'll find out about that after I stop recording. Yeah. So if they want to, if they want to keep up to date with all that stuff, networkonair.com yes. is the best thing. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of Jerry Anderson shows, Network have done, let me try and get this right, Four Feather Falls yep. uh, SD, yep. Supercar, SD, yeah. Fireball SD plus the colorized HD, episode colorized on Blu ray. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, haven't done Stingray or Thunderbirds. We've, we've uh, never touched Stingray or Thunderbirds. Okay, uh, we'll come back to those in a moment. Yes, okay. 
You've done Scarlet in HD yep. now. Yep. Joe Knight in HD coming up. Yep. Secret Service in SD so far. Yep. Any chance that might <laughs> make it to high definition one day? I mean, no, uh, you've done an episode well, for I, this is your, this is yeah, Super that, that, uh, yeah, we. Well, I mean, those those transfers we did for uh, this is Super Mario Nation. We, I mean, we we. We did that. They didn't have the same care and attention. That was a completely different process that we deployed there, yeah. which is why now we're doing it seriously. I mean, it's not to say they weren't doing it well, serious in the first place, but no. But I, uh, I was going to say you, you compare Joe 19 HD on this is Super Mario Nation to the Joe 90 first well, episode restoration. It's like watching yeah, two different yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah. It's different amazing. graders, uh, different kit. Yeah. Um, not enough time. They were nice to have on on that set, and you know, uh, again, it's one of those things that we're really proud. of. The whole concept of this is Super Mario Nation. Yeah. You know, I just thought it was, was was brilliant, and we needed the HD content to to, to make that Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. So, so yeah, secret, secret service, service. Will it maybe? Well, possibly? That, there is a possibility. We, we, you know, for me, that's not a priority. No, because that's a a very niche yeah. title. Very niche. Yeah. I'm sure people would would buy it in 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 HD, uh, given the chance, and you know, particularly if if you know, if they, if they want the complete set of Jerry, Jerry's stuff, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's necessary. We're going to have to do it sooner or later. But yeah. for me, I would rather go back and do one of the earlier series now. So uh, we have got plans, obviously. Yeah, of course. I'll be overly specific uh, no. right, right now. Let's get Joe out of the way and we'll see what happens. We've got, okay. the, we've got a couple of other projects uh, on the go. Uh, uh, anyway, well, I mean, the, the issue we've got is that we can't get this stuff out fast enough. Because you know whether whether you like it or not, it's time consuming. You can't Very rush this yeah. stuff. So well, you, you each just series have to wait. is is a minimum of six months work, probably overall. By the time you've arranged it, got yeah. the assets down, done the restoration work, yep. and prepped it all to go out. Yep. So yeah, it's that putting those back to back. That's yeah. like ten years worth of work. Well, yeah, that's, of work, that's right. Basically. I mean, yeah, we and we we we're certainly going to be around long enough to do it. Yeah. But yeah, my job at the moment is to expedite that content. Yeah. So which is why we're bringing the guys fully in hand. Now, so they're, they're going to be attached to our already established studio, and uh, the idea is, you know, with the best way in the world, we're not going to, you know, we'll 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 expedite it, but it, with the best in the world, it's not going to be more than double what we're getting out at the moment. Yeah. So, you know, you'd need you'd need an army of these people to, yeah. to 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 get through it. But then you've got to, they all do things differently. You know, they, you, to, to vet people who can do this stuff. Yeah, that's really difficult. They're, they're thin on the ground. You have yeah. people who can do it, and you can just, you know, the thing. The, you know, one of Jonathan's, uh, one of the things I love about Jonathan is that you know we deal with a multitude of programs, films, uh, sales agents, distributors, and they all do things in a completely different way. So when you're ordering up assets, mm. you never know. It, it doesn't matter how specific you are. You never know quite what you're going to get, and then they go through a QC, and we pick up something. It has to go back. We have to ask for another copy. They send the wrong episode. It's not a machine. You can't. Uh, it's not an exact science. No. Uh, uh, this stuff. You know, you bring stuff down, and you open, you open up a can of film, and there's nothing in it, or it's yeah. been mislabeled. You, you know, people go sick. People have off days. Yeah. Uh, you know, or you assets aren't available because they've been destroyed. Or as, assets as I'll get been, to in my little uh, list. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a good example. So we, we're just working on. There's an episode. The Man in Suitcase, the mm. revolutionaries. Now, there's one reel of that they cannot find the original Meg for. Right. So now we have to go to Los Angeles to get the IP equivalent. So you know, wow. it'll be in, in, you, know, you won't be able to perceive the difference no. by the time Jonathan. Especially with Jonathan matching it. Yeah. But, but that's an extra thing he's got to do. Yeah. Now, and it's an extra thing that we've got to do from and that's the logistics. Add stance, weeks because, and weeks to work. Yeah. Exactly. Just for one episode. Just for one episode. Well, just for one part of one episode. Okay, fine. You know. Yeah. Uh, but what I was going to say, what I was leading up to here was, uh, you know, you've got all this stuff going on. Uh, Jonathan is the only person in this entire industry who who can rely on to do the work. He'll give us a master, and you know, we do QC everything that goes through our studio, like everything, more than once. But if uh, Jonathan's the only person that can give us a master, and we could just output straight away without any problems, we know it's perfect. We've never ever been able to. Um, Spot any errors uh, yep. in his work. Now that that I, I can promise you, that's a rarity. Yep. You know, we always get problems with masters. Every master that Jonathan has ever delivered to us, I can't remember 
a single occasion where we've had to send it back and say, Jonathan, can you look at this thing? We found an issue. Yeah. Because he's he's just so diligent. Yeah. You know, and because he loves it. And he loves it. Yeah. yeah. And you have to amazing. use people to their capacity. Where, yeah, when you have to use people to their strengths like that, you can't. You know, I can't think of anyone else that you know that could do this work as, as well as this guy. Yeah. Thank God you got him on board. Indeed. Um, carrying on, carrying on your Jerry Anderson catalogue list. Yes. UFO in HD, recent Blu-ray release. Yeah. Has done. Yeah. Space 1999 series Absolutely. one and two SD yep. and HD. Yeah. And the movie versions of. And the yeah. One of them. Did we, did we did the Brings of Wonder. See, I've done so much of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what loads. exactly. What well, we... plus uh, Invasion UFO. Oh, yeah, you did, did that, as well. Yeah, invasion UFO. Yeah. Uh, and then Terror Hawks in SD and Terror HD. Hawks. Now, Terror Hawks is an interesting one because the original Megs were destroyed many years ago, and so you were working from prints. So tell me, yep. just again, the difference okay. from Meg to a print. Well, uh, and the fact that these were 16 mil, not 35 mil. Yes. Too. So you've lost something already. So yeah. you're, you're, you're dealing with like 25% of the picture area that you would normally get with 35 mil. But to make matters worse, we didn't have any Negs or yep. CRIs, which are the which would be the, the sort of next generation safety asset for a 16 mil negative. So we ended up using prints and uh, we couldn't find all of those yeah. either. So that, that was a real, I mean, it, it, it's incredible to think that, uh, you know, a series of that age, um, but I guess your dad will know more about that than any, anyone else in terms of what well, the assets. Well, as far, as far as I know for Terror Hawks, the, the negs were stored at a place in Rickmansworth. The vault closed down, and at the time, he he'd, wasn't in contact with Christopher Burr, his business partner for that production, and so all requests about what to do with the material went, you know, to mailboxes that weren't opened. And then they basically said, well, look, we're going to destroy it in 30 days. Nobody responded. And that was that. And along with those negs went the Dick Spanner negs as well, plus the negs for Into Infinity, plus, I think, the negs for Space Police. I mean, it's I, a it's, great shame. Yeah, it is. Um, well, but at least we did have some. Yeah, some film too. And you still made the 16 mil print. Well, we look did. Great. And to be honest, we weren't. We we assessed that. Um, so I think that's when you and I. Have, uh, that was one of the earliest projects you and I had worked yeah. on was Terror Hawks. Uh, but it, a lot of that was down to the fact. Well, okay, what assets? But there's no point in doing it if it's just going to put out everything that's been yeah. out before. Uh, and we had to do a, uh, a test. We learned some prints from is it ITV. We got them from. Yeah. 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 They still retained a set of prints, so we were able to utilise them. But I think there was like two or three episodes that, that were missing. But we weren't confident of getting a good result because they were transmission prints. Yep. And although they were, they were one generation down from uh, the original NEG, I mean, that's, that's still a good sign, but you, you, you've lost a lot of the, um, the clarity yeah. and, and the contrast. You, 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 you're already dealing with someone else's grade, yeah. uh, you know, when it went through the original film process. So that's not an ideal starting point at all. And, you know, a lot of what was, what was, what would originally been in the NEG is just lost in the print. Yeah. So you can't get everything back. But they, we did a test because we weren't sold on the idea of doing it, but they actually scrubbed up way better than we thought. Yeah, they came out really well. So that's what really sort of yeah. um, persuaded us that there was life in it. Yeah. And they look good. They, they do look good, yeah. yeah. So Terror Hawks in SD and HD, yeah. Dick Spanner SD. We've yeah. only got the tapes, so nothing yeah. we can do yeah, about we can that. Do about that. Uh, obviously, Lost Worlds of Jerry Anderson, that was the first project we did together, wasn't it? It which was, is, yeah. Which is, um, that was a nice little That's a real mixture of assets, because yeah, we is. had to go hunting for those. We did, uh, we which did was, well. Yeah, yeah, a global search for assets. Yep. Uh, and global managed. exploitation. Yeah, exactly, and it's come up really well. Yeah, it has. Uh, so that's a lovely set. You're now working on Space Precinct in SD. Yep. We're in SD because this is. I love uh, every, well, every one of these has got a different reason for the way yes. it, it it's yeah. worked out. So. so we're working SD now uh, because it was the original series was shot on film, 16 mil, 16 millimeter, yeah. uh, but edited on videotape. So uh, there's nothing really to work with, well certainly in SD than, than what we already have. But the film assets do still exist for that. Yeah. Uh, we're led to believe in their entirety, so we're going to see what we can do uh, about reconstructing and, and conforming yeah. the original We shouldn't film make assets. any promises on this, we though. We're not going to make any promises. In an ideal world, it would be lovely to experiment with that. Yes, it would, yeah. 
Is that what you were alluding to? Well, uh, not necessarily. I didn't know what you were going to say there, but oh, I'm glad okay, you did well. say that. No, but, no, but I mean, it, it, that is in itself a huge job because it's taking yeah. the 16mm elements, scanning them, putting it all back in well, to uh, match the edit. Yes. Uh, so that would be very exciting for Space Precinct, obviously. Yes. Uh, and then new Captain Scarlet you put out it on the uh, Blu ray as well. Yeah, yep. But so that was dead easy, the, uh, the asset. <laughs> Well, in, in re relatively, that, that was yeah. that was really easy because the, the assets were just delivered to us in, in HD, already done on a, on a hard drive. On a hard drive, so yeah. it, was, you know, it was just really, it was just a, just pulling the strings together to make yeah. it work. Pulling the strings together, so what did that? <laughs> Thank you. So that's a, yeah. So you, yeah. So I, I think what you're trying to say here is, is there nothing network can do? Well, obviously there is. Um, uh, don't think so Lavender Castle. Oh, well, Lavender Castle. We're, yeah, we're, well, we're but that's only because the, the, there's a right situation with that. Yeah, but, that's but we are going to try and we're yep. going to try and do something with that, right? Yep. So then the only two, the only gap really in HD terms is Stingray and Thunderbirds. I mean, we could. He did Torchy too, but we're not talking about that. And there's only one episode of Twizzle, so yeah. no point in that either. But yep. so, will we ever see a network HD restoration of Stingray and Thunderbirds? Watch this space. <laughs> I see. Right. I can I, I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, look. What, what, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm being reticent with, with an answer there is uh, because we've got so many other priorities. Uh, you know, we can't. You know, our release schedule. Yeah, we, when we've got a limited amount of output, you know, I really have to decide what is going to come out when, how much money it's going to cost, and how soon I can get that money back. Yeah. You know, uh, these are the. Yeah, quite aside of all those logistical and technical aspects that we've just talked about, you know, I have to look after the business end of it. And, um, you know, I have to make some very difficult decisions uh, about these things. I mean, yeah. I, 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 was a, I did a QA and a with uh, a Six of Wands convention, you know, the Prisoner Appreciated yeah. Society. So I did a Q&A with them, and someone asked me if Danger Man was going to come out in HD. And, you know, I said, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is going to come out. It is definitely scheduled. Yep. I can't say when, because it's like 47 hours. I mean, there's like nine months work there. Wow. Really? Now, if I do that, if I commit to 47 hours of that, well, that means something else has got to give. You know, we just can't yep. do everything at once. Now, yep. I have to think Danger Man will do really well. Oh, and we're only talking about the hour episode, too, the 39 half hours on top of that. Um, so, you know, you just have to prioritise. Unfortunately, yep. somebody took, my, took me on my word and think Danger Man's coming out in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had to sort of, you know, yeah. dispel it. So actually, no, you'll have to give us time. It is, we are doing it, but I just can't tell you when. But all in good time. All in good time. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they look great. I'm, I, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see they what do. you guys and Jonathan could do with Stingray and Thunderbirds. Well, uh, we actually, we might be able to make that happen if you want to come, uh, come along to the session. And actually, we, because we are starting to be a bit more open about what, what we do, um, <clears throat> we are actually going to start inviting people around to see how, you know, if anybody's interested to see how all this stuff, you know, comes together. Yeah. I'm sure people would love to know that because, yeah. like, again, like I say, it's kind of like a, a dark art hidden away. Nobody really knows what goes on to make it happen. Yeah. So as, as, as long as uh, whoever comes around doesn't stop the work, because that is because <laughs> that know, will just, cause uh, a huge delay. That just, in that uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, and then that's just going to get me loads more complaints. Yeah, no, we don't want that. No, we don't. Um, I got, I, I, just just going back to this Q and A I did back in April. Yeah. Someone asked me if we'd ever if we were ever tempted to paint out the strings. Okay, and your answer to that was? Well, immediately, forget it. Yeah. Because I know that that's sacrilege. Yes. Uh, and I know the fans would absolutely, they'd skin well, us It's altering the image that. rather than cleaning it, it or making it its best. That said, I thought about it a few weeks later and I thought, actually, the technology is there to actually do it. We mm. could. So we, we, I did discuss it with Jonathan and I said, well, why don't we do an episode of Joe 90 just as an experiment? Let's paint yeah. out the strings. Because, and I'll tell you what got me, what drove me to this was your father's ambition. No, it wasn't drink. <laughs> uh, it was your father's ambition yeah. to paint out the strings on set. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, so they tried their very best with all the techniques the, available yeah, there. They hated the strings and they wanted to. So really, we'd only be carrying out an ambition of your, your father's. Yeah. 
so we, uh, just as a, an expert, we were going to do it just on one episode. We would never um, supersede. Yeah, of course. Uh, we wouldn't replace know, the original, them. We wouldn't have replaced them, no. We would always offer an alternate version, just a little bit. Of, and, we, yeah, we, and we've done that before. So with the color episode of Fireball, yeah. for example, you know, we, you know, if, once we get this little, these quirky ideas in our head, we'll try and execute them. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, we'll try them. I mean, I thought Fireball looked superb. It does well. To be honest, I mean, I, in in the matters of anachronistic use of technology to yeah. change the original, yeah. we get requests weekly from people for col- more colorized fireball, See, I colorized would love to do that. I, I, if again, if the technology was there, I mean, we did that what 10 12 years ago yeah. something like that if if the, the technology is probably I mean, we haven't really looked at it too much uh, lately because we've just been tied up you know getting the, old, the original pictures You've got too uh, many things to do yeah um, it's not something that we we wouldn't really look at in in time because i think it would be, i mean fireball particularly will work really well with yeah. it. well it already has worked yeah, but it's there's like another 38 episodes yeah. to do and that is that's again that te- that whole technical process is amazing uh, yeah. the studio in san diego uh, did that work for us, and um, you know we were we were involved uh, you know, every step of the way. Um, and uh, if I could do more of that, again, that's just really expensive. That's more yeah. expensive and more time consuming. More time consuming. Yeah. So you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't um, expect to do that anytime soon. But it's not a never. It's, no, it's not, not a no. Never. It's a it's a yeah. maybe one day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Getting away from the technical stuff, Tim. Oh, I, I should just come back about the string. So oh, I did, yeah, sorry, I did pose this to Giles and I said, okay, so why don't we just do an experiment as an extra? Yeah. Why don't we do one, one episode of Joe uh, <coughs> and paint out the strings uh, just to see, you know, this would be this would be Jerry Anderson's version of Joe 90, mm. really. No, really, could, Yeah, be. yeah, okay. Uh, Johnson said, forget it, it's going to take... <laughs> It's gonna. It's gonna take a said, year. It's gonna take. You could do it. Uh, so yeah, we have the technology here. We could do it. But he said you are looking at. You know, this is like Disney animation time. Yeah. Uh, work to be done. Tens here, of so. minutes of frame at least, even at full yeah. pace, I guess. And that's that's. So that that was a, that, that was a work. definite no. But okay. I, I I live in hope. Okay. An interesting idea to entertain anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So so away from the technical stuff. Are you got more just technical to, things no, to no, say? No, no, Just to reiterate uh, to anyone listening, we're not doing it. We're not painting out okay. strings. You're not painting out strings. Case. You're not doing colorized fireball or supercar. No, no, no. I, I no. I just want to make that. I, I want to make the point <laughs> that just in case anyone hasn't got it, we are not going to interfere yeah. with the original source material. It Good. will always go out. It's just a, it's just an idea. Yeah. It's just a, an experiment. Know, an experiment. A potential Quirk. experiment. Yeah. 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 A bit of fun. Okay. I'm glad you reiterated that tip. Yeah, I probably should. I'll probably do an insert now just to, like, with a klaxon to say, you know, just to reiterate once more, uh, the strings will still be there. So away from the technical stuff, Yeah. why has Network become the home of Jerry Anderson material? That's a very good question. I don't, I don't rightly know. Don't say know. you fall into it. I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to say, because I love it. I'm expecting well, you to say, I know you're not so fond of Terror Hawks, but well, no, it's not. I, I mean, I do love these shows, but that's not the re- that, that's not the reason. And I love working on them. Uh, and you know, they 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 form as you know, bigger part of my childhood as uh, everyone else's. Mm. It is a good fit with that label because you know we've you've seen the the, the care and love that we that we put yep. into them. So absolutely, uh, I don't if, think you could hope for a better pairing. Actually, no, I don't. I don't think so. To but be why? Well, how has um, it happened? Okay, so you, we work with people like Jonathan and we work... I can't do this. I can't do any of the work we do if people are not interested yep. in, in, in the content. Yep. So, you know, we're lucky at Network uh, that, you know, not everyone that works at the company is into this stuff. And, you know, not... Because you, know, you can't be into everything. I mean, no. I'm not keen on a lot of the stuff that we, that, that we put out, but it's, it's equally at home on Network as, yep. uh, as your dad's stuff. Yeah. Um, but on, on, on the Jerry Anderson catalogue, yeah, we have a, probably a disproportionate amount of staff who are really into it, including yep. myself. And then we know a disproportionate amount of uh, external people yep. who help us on that quest. Okay. And, you know, people like yourself. And, yep. you know, we're, we're, as, we're as keen to preserve your father's legacy as much as you are. That is a great uh, summary, Tim. And you're doing a very good job. Thank you. Uh, have you got a favourite Jerry Anderson show then? Uh, UFO. UFO is your favourite? Yeah. Okay, yeah, without, why? Without, um, I don't know, it just, I think it's one of the first shows that uh, I remember watching in its entirety 
on its original broadcast and there was just an atmosphere about it. I mean, I was, I, I've got to admit, I was a bit disappointed when I saw it in its entirety in the mid 80s when it, when it was um, rebroadcast. Yeah. But I've grown, I've, I, I've never, I've never not loved it. I've never been, uh, yeah, I, I, I was disappointed for, for other reasons, I think, when I saw it in the mid 80s. But I think it's a, it's just a brilliant show now. I, you know, I have watched the whole thing in HD, and I thought yeah. this is a, this is this is a class production. It was class, it wasn't yeah, it? It was. Yeah, I mean, there, there was perhaps too much going on uh, <laughs> at, at um, you know at various uh, times, but you know the 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 whole thing had a real uh, had an atmosphere that, that no other show has. That's what I love about it. Okay. Very good choice. Uh, least favorite. Well. This is going to. So this is to choose from. Well, no, no, it's not that. Um, this is going to sound weird, but probably Thunderbird. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I think for the same reason, and I, I and uh, you know, I didn't notice that with UFO. That statement I've just made about UFO. You know, sometimes there's just too much going on. Yeah. With Thunderbirds, I noticed that as a kid, there was always too much going on. Okay. And yeah, I didn't like the I didn't like the idea that you know uh, the boys would wheel out a machine to solve a very specific problem yeah. that you'd never see again, ever. Okay. You know, and that's the whole thing. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at this, even as a kid, I thought, actually, that's completely implausible. I, I, I just, <laughs> I just don't go. I just don't go for that. Okay. Uh, so and, I, and yet the I, I, Harlington It kind Strakers, of irritates me even now. The Harlington Straker setup was, was okay and plausible. And well, the, as, a, as an eight-year-old, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, that, that, that did. Interesting. And, and, <laughs> Still, no, actually, I know there are there are, there are huge holes in, in UFO. Yes, just you know that you you can see them thinking, oh, well, actually, hopefully, no one will notice. Yeah, but this, I think, this happens with all older television because it wasn't made in a way where it was made to be scrutinised. No, but that's as, it. As that's modern it. television no, is, absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. yeah. But that's really interesting that you have yeah. the favourite Thunderbirds at least. Well, I th- I th- you know, Thunderbirds is just too spectacular for the small screen. You know, it's okay. just. You know, and that's another reason know, to get it out in HD. Well, well, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm forever hopeful that yeah, that day so will come when it comes out on uh, Network's label, but I'm not sure as I'm going to be watching it when it does. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, final question, Tim. Yes. Before I let you go. Yes. Having we're here so- for the duration. You can ask me as much as you want. Yeah, I know, but we're, we're an hour on the interview, so... <laughs> Never on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, which is a great length of interview. So finally, Tim, yeah. <laughs> for now, until we do another episode, obviously. Yep. With all your experience of Anderson stuff over the years and having seen it and, you know, had feedback from fans, seen restoration, seen the detail that's gone in, been involved in behind the scenes, documentary kind of stuff, met I the people. I cannot imagine where this question's No, no. Really. Can you identify what, what it is, what is the, the Jerry Anderson spirit that is the constant thread through all of those shows, even though they're so very different, shot in different ways, puppets, live action, that there is something that is the same throughout. Can you identify it? Do you have any idea what it might be? Uh, well, the puppet series, you, I mean, that doesn't need any, any real kind of analysis in that respect, does it? Because, I mean, Super uh, Mario Nation, Super Mario Nation. I think this is, yeah, because I think your dad never, I never, I don't think, and you know, I met your dad lots of times. I don't think he ever really um, appreciated that uh, he'd invented something. He, he pioneered. I mean, he was a pioneer. Yeah, absolutely a pioneer. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think he ever really appreciated that. I don't think he had the confidence. I don't. I don't know what was going on with your dad in that respect. <laughs> but he did. He, you know, him and Sylvia, they created something unique. Yep. And and it and, and it remains so. You can see yep. these shows, and you know. Yeah, that, 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 that's Jerry Anderson's trademark. Yeah. The li- even the live action stuff, even though they're not, you know, you can still tell they're Jerry's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they are spectacular mm. and, you know, there's, 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 they, visually, they just look, you know, it's a Jerry Anderson yeah. thing. And if, if your dad succeeded in doing anything, he, he definitely made his own, he created his own trademark in that yeah. respect. So, spectacular visuals. Yes. I think that's a pretty good answer because yeah. you can see it through pretty much everything. It's except, the, wor- it's the worlds of Jerry Anderson. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It is the worlds of Jerry yeah. Anderson. I know, um, not, the, uh, not the lost worlds of Jerry Anderson. Yeah. It's no, the, the known worlds. worlds. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think that's good. As, a, a perfectly good answer, Tim. Everyone's got their own answer. That's the weird thing. Well, I, I, I can't think of a way to, to uh, you know, it, it could sound quite insulting not, not to be able to sort of apply 
some description to it, but you know, he's no, no, a the, trademark. You know, yeah. he, he, it's a visual trademark yeah. like no other. Yeah, whether he likes it or not, that's what he's always going to remember for because that's what he created. Yeah. That is a perfect place to end it. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, Tim, thank you so much for giving me that uh, nearly hour of his time. Wow. So, and, Interesting and he stuff. is a very busy man. Um, yeah. But I thought it was its just really nice that normally network work sort of work in the shadows a little bit. They don't really go yes. out there and talk about the work they're doing, but it is really important work because otherwise we wouldn't have all these lovely HD restorations. Um, no, absolutely and it's right. Because of people like the team of network and the passion they have for classic and cult TV and film that this stuff mm. is available so it's brilliant mm. I'm sure Tim will probably make a few uh, not enemies that's the wrong word but um, uh, will upset a few people frenemies a few frenemies yes by by picking uh, Thunderbirds as his least yes. favourite Jerry Anderson the shock show. reveal the least favourite well. it's really unusual but you know candid yeah. honest interview absolutely uh, and I kind of I understand what he means I don't I don't agree, but I... Yeah, I, but the reasons were sound, Yeah, yeah, they? yeah, exactly. Um, mm, and also, point. very exciting that hopefully in due course, we will be seeing the final two series, really, that the network haven't done HD restorations of, Stingray and yeah. hopefully, fingers crossed, Thunderbirds coming yeah. out in proper condition. Because, of course, the Thunderbirds Blu-ray that exists now has been cropped to 16 right. uh, by 9, oh, okay. Oh, okay. rather than the 4-3 original ratio, which it cuts off a load of... Detail yeah, and extra stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully right. a proper beautiful restoration. But if you if you have uh, watched the um, the Joe ninety episode that's on the Captain Scarlet HD Blu Ray set, then you'll see just what a stunning job of the restoration they're doing. It it looks mm. like it was filmed last week. It's just gosh, just beautiful. The vibrant colours. And again, it's people like Jonathan Wood, like Tim mentioned, who just love this stuff and do such a brilliant job. Anyway. Enough about mm. that. If you want to see what network are up to, networkonair.com. Um, and there's other stuff they're up to that may interest you beyond the Jerry Anderson universe. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. That's a, a fantastic interview. And there are so many more, of course. Well, we've got at least eight others that I can think of uh, in our previous podcast, other interviewees to listen to. So do uh, right. check back. Or is it seven? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's an, a, you know, a number that's greater than one and smaller than ten of interviewees exactly. in previous episodes. And many, many more coming up as well. I'm going to try and grab some time. I'm spending a, a few nights away. <laughs> this is going to, I, Perhaps I shouldn't put it quite like that. With Beth Chalmers. Excellent. <laughs> in, in a couple of weeks. Watch who, out, um, because she she's a very good boxer, isn't she? So. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, uh, who, uh, who sort of Terror Hawks and Big Finish fans will know, a, a fantastically versatile voice actor. Uh, I've recently worked with Jamie on the, the new Terror Hawks box sets with Big Finish. Um, also next week I'm um, I'm spending some time with Andrew Clements and I thought I might grab a few words with him about what the whole fan experience is like. What is it like being a Jerry Anderson fan and what um, well, you know is it still exciting to, to to live in the in the world of Jerry Anderson these days as a fan? I, I hope um, it's one of the most yeah. exciting times in the last ten years. Exactly. So I might well try and grab a few words with him as well and see if we can uh, see what he's all about. Excellent. Well, we have other yeah. interviews lined up in the not too distant future. Uh, with uh, Nicholas Briggs, voice of the Daleks, mm -hmm. and Mr. Big Finish. Uh, mm -hmm. Robbie Stevens, voice of mm -hmm. Young Star, and many others from Terror Hawks and Beyond, and Captain Blue yep. and New Captain Scarlet. Uh, Chris yep. Packham is coming up. Great. Um, and I'm doing my very best to, in the not too distant future, get an interview with Anthea Turner. Oh, lovely, Blue right. Peter and Tracy Island make fame. <laughs> of course. Because uh, I think it's Blue Peter's 60th, 60th anniversary coming up, isn't it? So it feels it only is. right that You're we right. should be... You know, yeah. doing a bit of a Blue Honoring Peter that. Anderson crossover episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How very, very exciting. So there we go. That's very good. Uh, so uh, to make sure you don't uh, to miss any of those future episodes and interviews, then of course you must subscribe and rate and review would be nice, of course, uh, to make sure that you don't miss a single episode. Please do those things. Hmm. Uh, now it's time for us to head over to Bonnie, Scotland, ah. where Chris and Marina are almost going on a romantic date of sorts. Uh, well, it's not really. I mean, actually, <laughs> listen out because Chris Chris says something quite sinister to Marina in the first few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Uh, so here we go. It's oh. time for the randomizer with Chris and Marina uh, in Scotland. Well, Marina, here we are in Bonnie, Scotland. Oh, just look at that view. What? Oh, that. Ah, well, that down there is uh, is all that's left of Glengarry Castle. Uh, I must say, I wasn't expecting to see so many tourists about the place. 
It's the ruined castles that have cornered the tourist market. Ah, which explains why yours is now doing so well, Mr Morton. Thanks to Captain Scarlet. Yes, he's a good chap. I say, Mr Morton, would you care to set the old randomizer going this week? Uh, you just have to press the big red button right there. I understand. Right. Well, if that's everything, I'll say good night. Oh, uh, good night, Mr Morton. It's two in the afternoon. What an odd fellow. Well, Marina, what's... Oh, what's wrong? Let me see. Oh. Well, cheer up, old girl. Uh, sure, it's an episode you're not in much, but just think of it as us getting that one out of the way so that the next time we land on a Stingray episode, it'll be one of yours. Come on, let me see a smile. There we go. Okay. Right, everybody, stand by for more Stingray. Here, in case you hadn't already figured it out, is Loch Ness Monster. Stand by for action. Well, here we are back with Stingray again, and we're also back with one of the other running uh, Jerry Anderson themes in the Super Mario Nation era, the Scottish episode. Now, we've already covered a slightly Scottish episode with uh, 30 Minutes Afternoon, but that only had one scene in Scotland. This takes place, as you may guess from the title, entirely in Scotland. Uh, this was a, something Jerry Anderson seemed to have a, a real thing for Scottish episodes and Scottish elements in the shows. Uh, Aside from this, the most notable episode would be Captain Scarlet's The Trap with uh, Glen Gary Castle. Um, we also had a, a Scottish chief engineer in Fireball XL5, Jock. Uh, Captain Grey in New Captain Scarlet was Scottish. Uh, there's one more Scottish thing, I'm sure. Did Fireball XL5 do an episode in a Scottish castle? No, no, that was Supercar. That was uh, The Phantom Piper. Uh, so it it was something that Jerry seemed mildly obsessed with, and I imagine it was probably quite fun to for the production team to to design something different for a change. And this is our first appearance of Admiral Denver, uh, Commander Shaw's old friend in inverted commas, um, who appeared several more times throughout the series, usually through some form of uh, rivalry or competition between the two of them. Uh, Looks like there's a pretty large fish around. I don't here. know if it was that he was just meant as a one-off and kept on, but <laughs> yes, we should probably mention straight away that this Loch Ness monster puppet is in no way convincing whatsoever. However, as we learn later in the story, he's not meant to be, and I kind of like the the close-up of the face there. He looks kind of dopey, a little dopey, smiley Loch Ness monster. Um, for those of you who don't know, this um, this monster, the close-ups and the model, were reused from uh, Fireball XL5's Space Monster. So, and maybe they just wrote the story because they had this old model lying around, but I think it's more the Jerry connection. Jerry loves his Scotland. Yeah, well. And for the first appearance of Admiral Denver, this scene really sets up the... Uh, the sort of friendly rivalry between him and Commander Shaw very well. Commander Shaw's just sat there with his newspaper, completely dismissive of the whole thing. So Stingray's off to Scotland. Yes. And I'd give anything to go with them. Some of my mother's people came from there. Uh, but Marina's part of the crew, so naturally she'll be going. No, Marina's with me now. You don't have to worry about her this week. Interesting map there, uh... Glasgow spelt with a, a C on the go. That's uh, is that correct? Is that a, a local thing, or have they just misspelt that? Glasgow. What's the matter, Marina? Are you worried about that? Don't you want to come with us? It's interesting that Marina is uh, rather reluctant to travel across land in this. When uh, I know from personal experience, she's quite happy now to travel uh, all over the universe. Uh, maybe because I don't give her much of a choice. Maybe we can talk Atlanta into coming with us. <laughs> yeah, she's always our number two choice. She's a permanent runner-up, this poor woman. It's, uh... You can say Stingray! It is quite a shame. You know, with the whole, um, Troy, Atlanta, Marina love triangle thing, if it came down to it, Troy would pick Marina every time, but Atlanta would never stop waiting for him. And I've always felt that the way that would ultimately resolve itself was in some way Marina would have to go home. Uh, that would have been 
a natural end to the relationship. I don't think she could have stayed on land for the rest of her life. Um, and Troy, being Troy, would definitely have just rebounded straight to Atlanta and they would have got together, finally. I'll run that old film that we got out of the museum again. Oh, this is so cute. They have a little film machine on Stingray with the word videotape attached to it. There you are, Atlanta. What you came all this way to see. It sure is worth it, Troy. Bonnie Scotland. And you can probably tell from that that uh, this episode is going to take the very sort of traditional, stereotypical view of, of Scotland and its people. Um, as you would reasonably expect it to do. There's no way they would go anything but the full uh, haggis and kilts and the okay, the new... And as you enjoy the haggis buns, you can look forward to the steaming hot porridge you'll be getting in the morning. I will, Jimmy McGregor. Och, I, I will. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Yes, I can't help but think that people, real Scottish people, might uh, might take offence at this. Oh, I don't know, is it, maybe it's just so not true to the reality of Scotland that people have just, just dismiss it, just move past it by now. I don't know, if you are, if you're listening to this and you are a, a Scottish personage, do you find this sort of thing, uh, offensive or inoffensive or annoying? But, yes, do please let us know. Now, the first half of this episode is, uh, I think largely been filler because we can't really show the monster too much in the first half. So now we have, in addition to the Scottish episode, we also have another Jerry Anderson staple, a dream sequence. Uh, luckily, it's only about oh, 30 seconds long. And I just look at this dream sequence and think, this is probably what Jerry Anderson considered Scotland to be, just distilled down to its its bare essentials. Bagpipes, kilts castles, uh, highland jigs, um, it's, yeah, it's, um, I, I like this, even though it's utterly pointless. There's some lovely work gone into the interior sets of this castle. I'm wondering how much of it was reused from, from previous Scottish castles in previous Jerry Anderson shows, and how much would be reused again later for, uh, for 30 Minutes Afternoon and the trap. Hey. But now we have, uh, since we have a castle and we have some time to kill, we may as well sneak around the castle holding out. candles. Um, oh, Atlanta's already uh, already doing that. It does. Uh, it does point to this episode not really having much of a story beyond. Loch Ness Monster, Scotland, uh, Stingray. It's it's kind of just watching the characters kill time until we get to the end, really, or until they get to see the monster. This sneaking around is kind of largely irrelevant, especially when they all split up and go off you in separate have directions. You not scared, folks. That, that monster wouldn't leave the lock. Yeah, but these old castles have ghosts. Ghosts, yes, that would that would take up a whole episode all by itself. Ghosts, scary paintings. Troy is basically almost setting Atlanta on fire the way he's holding this candle. He's got it right out in front of him, just kind of rammed into the back of her head. Let's take a look in there. We don't want to lose another puppet to the flames, Troy. We've we've already lost one good friend. Yes, the result of all the sneaking around in the castle is just discovering an empty room. We're running out of places to look. We're not really bringing the thrills this week. Not yet, anyway. Who could be behind this door? Is it phones? Is it phones? Is it phones? Is it phones? Why, it appears to be phones. Wow. Oh, oh, you sure gave me a fright. Did you find anything, phones? No. So these three have I just sort of... Swing in this place. Well, we covered the rest scared themselves, gone off to investigate, and managed to scare themselves even further. Maya? Yes. Ah. Uh, Lee empty. Not the most, not the most fearless aquanauts. Oh, now we have another door slowly creaking open. Could it be any one of the other two characters in the story? 
Uh-huh. Yes, yes, it could. It could be the person who owns the castle. Well, well, well. What are you three doing up in the middle of the night? We heard him. I can't really put myself in the mindset of a kid watching this and genuinely being. You know what it was? Yeah. Being scared or being suspenseful about this. I'm not gonna worry about it now. Let's go to bed. No, it's not like we set out to actually find anything interesting. We we should just go back to bed. Oh, that's a lovely shot of Stingray in front of the castle moving away. Along with some lovely Barry Gray music. And here's our Loch Ness monster friend again, looking uh, very muppety. Uh, I do think the close-ups of the head... It, it The face does have a lot of character, but when it's swimming along in the model shots, it looks pretty bad um oh but that dopey face that close up is just so much fun actually I, th- I think I take back what I said about the model shots it does look reasonably effective swimming along I do kind of like the idea that it's just the uh, the two brothers keeping the monster the legend of the monster alive for the tourist trade which has it is an idea that's turned up in in other things. Uh, I doubt it was it was new when this was made. Pretty good for the tourist trade. Huh? Aye, aye, it's very good for us. Could you show us it working, Andy? Aye, you could. But you've damaged it pretty badly. It'll be a long. I seem to remember that this episode was one of the very first to be shown. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think it was like the the third or fourth episode that was shown, so evidently somebody thought this was uh, impressive enough to be shown as one of the initial episodes of the show. I have to say, um, it's not as good as I remember it. Watching it back today, it's uh, kind of highlighted that not really much happens. Uh, It's a nice idea. It's an obvious idea to have Stingray um, go after the Loch Ness Monster. But nothing much really ever comes of it. And when we get back to Marineville, Admiral Denver and Commander Shaw just go straight back to their arguments, so nothing's really been achieved. Didn't you get any proof? Well, uh, no. I do like that Troy's been put into this situation where he's got a choice between uh, helping the, the two local brothers keep up their legend of the monster or being true to the World Aquanaut Security Patrol. And in a way, he manages to do both at the same time. Well, none of you sound too certain. For my money, the mystery of Loch Ness is still a mystery. If you're calling me a liar, sure. There you go again, making accusations just because you're... Ray Barrett and David Graham do uh, do great jobs with these characters, especially when they're, they're yelling. Commander Shaw's always been a, a favourite Stingray character of mine just because of his... Uh, short fuse, Ray Barrett does such a good job with him, so it's nice that he has like a, an antagonist to really spark off of in the form of Admiral Denver, which is probably why they brought the character back a couple of times. Well, that was Loch Ness Monster. Um, I've got to say, it was never been one of my favourites, but it was, it's okay. Uh, It's like they had a really good idea and then they're just sort of like, well, we don't really have much story for this, so uh, let's plod around the castle for a little while. Uh, In closing, I do have a question that I would like to direct to our one of our esteemed hosts, Mr. Jamie Anderson. Uh, Jamie, sir, your father's uh, interest slash obsession with uh, Scotland and including Scottish elements in this show, what was that all about? Why did he keep going back to Scotland in these stories? Did he ever go to Scotland for real? Um, did he ever put on a kilt and dance the Highland jig and play the bagpipes? Uh, I just want to know what the uh, what the obsession was all about. It, 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 it crops up too often in these shows for it to just be a coincidence. I think it's definitely a directive from above, make it Scottish. And amazingly, that's yet another Scottish episode down. How many more are we going to have? Only time will tell. 
Well, there's a lot of wow. stereotypical Scottish action going on there. <laughs> Kilts, yeah. uh, you know, Jimmy McGregor yeah. and uh, yeah. all sorts of, um, yeah, slightly racist stuff in, in well. some ways. I mean, it, it's done in the best possible 60s of taste. Of course it is. Uh, yeah. 60s taste. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. I do know what you mean, yeah. No, that was great. Thank you, Chris, for another fantastic randomizer. How interesting. So he posed a question there about uh, so many of your dad's um, stories being set in Scotland. Mm. I mean, was there a... I don't know, familial connection or just a liking or love of the place? Um, well, there's certainly no familial connection. Mm. Uh, so when I when I was a kid, we went to Scotland on holiday a couple of times and I certainly remember going to it, some castle somewhere mm. uh, and there being um, a gift shop with various tartans there. Uh-huh. And uh, I looked up the Anderson Tartan because it's an Anderson, Anderson's a Scottish name. And I, and I thought at the time that that's, that was possibly the reason. But I mean, I was like, Eight or yeah. nine, probably. Yeah. And it was then that Dad explained that actually Anderson isn't the real family name. Yes. In fact, it was Abraham's, and before that, it was Bielaglowski. So Dad's great grandparents right. came over from Poland at the end of the uh, 19th century. Right. Um, came over and settled in um, Westcliff on Sea. Ah. Yeah. Interestingly, where yeah. Peter Lippmann, our favourite school teacher, yeah. uh, and where I've just spent the last week. And where you've just been. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when they came over, the name was changed at the port because the guy at immigration couldn't spell Bieloglovsky, yeah. neither can I. Uh, so he said, <laughs> yeah. oh, you'll be known as Abrahams now. And then um, during the war, Dad was so terribly bullied for having a Jewish name that the family changed the name to Anderson. Oh, so wow. that's, So there is no Scottish connection no, in familial terms. Yeah. Um, beyond that, he certainly loved Scotland. He, he thought the vistas were beautiful and... Uh, it was just a kind of lovely, slightly magical place to be. So we had some great, yeah. great holidays up there, great family trips oh, yeah. up. The cat's climbing all over my computer now. Uh, excellent. Diana, Here we go. can you go away, please? Thank you. <laughs> um, so, lo- yeah, lots of family trips up there. Uh, one in particular that I remember when we uh, were flying back from Glasgow Airport. Hmm. And uh, strangely, it was, it was the last trip that we made as a family to Scotland. And I think oh, the reason is... Um, that uh, when we were waiting in the airport, the flight was delayed and uh, Dad went off um, for a pee and he came back about six minutes later completely red-faced and looking a bit sheepish. (laughs) Right. And uh, he said, I think we should um, just go, go, we should go to a cafe or something for a bit. Let's go somewhere else. All very odd. And then he explained that uh, he'd mistakenly walked into the ladies' loos. There wasn't anybody in there, so... He didn't realise. He went into a cubicle, not thinking, well, there aren't any urinals here. <laughs> yes. Walked out of the cubicle. There was a lady they had just walked in and she screamed. Oh! Like top of her lungs scream, which oh, we didn't dear. hear outside. But then he thought, yeah. oh, God, I'm going to be, you know, chased down as a <laughs> as an incorrect <laughs> toilet visitor. Uh, so there you go. But we never went back to Scotland after that. So whether really? he felt like he should be on the run from the Scottish police oh, or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, no, we went to lovely places and lovely old kind of hotels and he, he definitely had a love for it. So that that is the reason yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yes, yeah, great. That's a very funny story. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Chris, for another randomizer. He'll be back with us next week, of course, in pod 11. 11? Uh, that feels be, so I weird know, saying know, that. Know. Uh, I know, and where he'll be uh, sat in front of yet another random episode uh, from a Jerry Anderson series to give us uh, his thoughts and comments. Uh, don't forget to uh, rate and review and subscribe and get in touch on podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. And tweet uh, and us. if you'd like mm-hmm, to enter the, uh, the £200 worth of prize giveaway, head over to jerryanderson.co.uk forward slash giveaway and um, try your luck. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Mm, yeah. Uh, and I guess we'll probably be speaking to you next week. I should imagine so, or yes. Or next time you listen in to the podcast, whenever that is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. And uh, It's been swell. It has been swell. And we hope to hear from you and read out your email in due course or whatever. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget, send us a voice clip because we didn't have yeah. any voice clips this week and we love to have, you know, to yeah. hear from our listeners rather than just... Yeah, hear from them in absolutely. a non-literal sense. Anyway. Yes, that'd be great. Should we go away now, Richard? Yeah, I think we'll leave them alone for now. <laughs> okay, have a nice week, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Stage one complete. Let's go.
Right. OK, uh, get my agent on the phone. Yeah, tell them if if he doesn't sort out the opening credits, I want my name first, OK? He needs another co-presenter. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's gone on, because people are sending in emails and they're putting his name first. Oh, sorry, you're still recording this. No, no, um, no, there's no, no recording going on. It's absolutely oh, fine. That Nobody sorry, will hear I didn't that. you were still... No, 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 that's oh. fine. Don't worry. Anyway, uh, thanks, Richard. I'll yeah. um, speak to you next week. Speak to you week. soon, then. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.